Hi. <laughs> also, hi, creative breakfast. Nice of you to just drop by. I've been playing all the games in like not in order but in like what's the word for it chronological order as in like the um, order things happen in in the games so first the trilogy then both investigations games and Apollo Justice, and then the 3DS games are up next. And then Professor Lighten, because... First of all, I never played it, so I don't really know what it's all about. Um, but I don't think I would consider it like part of the main canon. So even though it technically happens after the trilogy, I wanted to wait until I was finished with all the other games. Because I want to save wanted to save that for last because that's the only one that I haven't played yet. I played all the other ones. Though I last played Apollo Justice in like 2017 when I first got it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> but I recently started replaying it in my own time. But then I I finished like a turn about Serenade, which I finished again yesterday. And uh, I decided, you know what? No, I'm gonna save the last case. Because that's like the most important one. And I don't remember much of it. Like all the other games I played up until now. Yeah, I'm almost done. What is this insanity? Oh my god. Also, oh god. Anyways, I'm having I'm having a great time, really. Maybe one day I'll edit down the uh, the videos I currently have made, but uh, today is not that day. <laughs> I can say that for sure. Okay. Yeah, I I know I know. It's not. Why did the music stop? I don't understand. No, I want the other one. Yes. Oh, sure. Huh. <sighs> I just feel like the, it's easier to keep the consistency, you know, because I, I always forget, like, what I'm doing. <laughs> if I don't, like, play it, like, straight through. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's not a competition. I just, I just like playing it like this even though it's really tiring on my end because i'm sitting here and i'm reading all the time <laughs> i can't like really take a break and just like let the game play itself you know no i can't do that have a snack no you have to stop playing for a few minutes just to have a snack like, <laughs> anyways <laughs> it's cool it's cool why don't we just get right into it might as well, you know. Turnabout Succession. The last episode of the Apollo Justice game. And that is the whole truth of this case. Interesting. In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of these last seven long years. Nothing happens by chance. All is connected. Now, you stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. I f I'm fucking ready, bro. I'll fucking bring it. What 
Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. Kristoff, you motherfucking bitch. Oh god. I am so hype. I am so excited. I fucking overslept today. Woke up at like 5 and I'm like, fuck. I have to get up, get something to eat and stream. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> hey Apollo, look! On TV! Look! Look! Yeah, uh, I'm kind of busy. Whoa, look at that! He's the last Grammarillo, right? Amazing! Apollo, you should be watching this! Ow, 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 what? What? I was writing about our last case in my journal. They're such siblings already. <laughs> Lawyers are supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals. Am I now? That case was three months ago. Three months ago?! <laughs> hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. Right now, I'm, I'm wowing the crowd by figuring out how Lamy Roar disappeared. That's right! Uncle Valent did that illusion too! You're missing him on TV right now! I was just getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch a little TV with her. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're now seeing is a... Pardon? Rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth. Happening right here at our very own Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum? Hey, that's where the governor's concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen here. Right before your unbelieving eyes. Legendary troupe Grammarie is performing for the first time in seven years! Hell yeah. Okay, we only have Phoenix. He's still 33. She's still 15. It's going to be great! I'm so there! You and Daddy are coming too. Legendary Grammarie's. Trucy's real father was still alive. He'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. Ah, you're here. Working hard or hardly working? Hey, how you been? Hi there, stranger. Not exactly the kind of greeting I'd want to hear from my own kid. Well, he has been gone for a long time. <laughs> How goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay! Pudding! I love pudding! Ooh, it's farm fresh! Not just one pudding, but three whole cups! I'll have to pace myself. I'm beat. That's right, Daddy! You're on a top secret mission! Uh, thank you, thank you for letting us know, <laughs> Trucy. You gotta take it easy with the secrets, you know? <laughs> How right you are. So you still can't tell us what your mission is. Maybe it is time. It has something to do with you anyway. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Huh? With me? Oh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission too. Maybe you can be one of those guys. A spy! Can I just be a defense attorney? <laughs> Apollo just came here to defend. <laughs> To be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here today. What? Tell me, you have heard of the jurist system, yes? The jurist system? That's right, the new legal system everyone's talking about. Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe? Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. Jurist system, huh? So, Daddy, what's this jurist system thing? Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Isn't that those people who sit in court in those old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy's innocent or guilty. Do you know Apollo? Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? 
Well, they were thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the Jewish system. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. Not quite that harsh. The jurists cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. And there will only be six of them under the current proposal, right? Oh, you know yourself, Apollo. I thought he said he hadn't heard of it. <laughs> or he, he might have heard of it. Apollo, you're confusing me. Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully, people will start taking the course a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show. Starring Dr. Wright. <laughs> Dr. Wright, his assistant Trucy, and mascot Apollo, the perfect team. Mascot. Hey! Talk to me, Papa Flamebird. So, what is this secret mission? The Jewish system is my mission, more or less. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Too true. Everyone's got an opinion and they just talk and talk and nothing gets decided. Kind of like you, Apollo. Uh, I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, we're going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. I'll take a case as a sample and choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping? How? For one, I'll be chair of the Jurist System Simulated Court Committee. The chair constructs the ideal situation, choosing that case, the jurist candidates. Even the judge and the courtroom. Wow, it's like you have a real job. <laughs> Tracy, drag your father. I was never that good at the piano, to be honest. You don't fucking say. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, I guess. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The trial simulation, that is. Simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So, what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Well, since it's the first run-through of the new system, I wanted something simple. Good thinking! No sense wearing yourself out on something too serious. True, the case is a murder. That's not simple at all! By simple, did you mean that the defendant is... Guilty, yes, most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? With a trial tomorrow. You're defending, of course. Recall that I said it had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo. It's just a test case, anyway. No sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst-case scenario. Uh, you mean the verdict for real? That's not a test trial. That's a real trial. All the forms have been filled. There's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hope you can make the make room in your schedule. W why am I only hearing about this now? Ah, yes. There was a change this morning. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Fleur. I picked a new case. Eh? Something that happened last night. Okay, talk to me about Valent. Hey, Apollo, I know you're all excited about that secret mission. But what about this? The Troop Grammarie Grand Magic Show. Huh. Oh, right. The card tricks. They're not card tricks. They're grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse. So what? That's three whole days from now. It's a Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go. Let's go today. We can say hi to Uncle Valent. Have fun. <laughs> What? I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. Are you sure about that? <laughs> right. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Oh, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow, regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yippee! Now you can take me to the Coliseum! Uh, I suppose it wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Ah, Marie, that reminds me. What's this, Daddy? 
Isn't that silk hat the Grandma Marie seal? Consider it a birthday present, Trucy. Thanks, it's great! But today is my birthday. Hmm, good point. What day is it today, Apollo? Huh? Today? Uh, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. And it's a Recycle Your Plastics present. Yippee! So it's plastic! I've given up trying to understand them. <laughs> it's much easier that way. So what is it? He is. He is just done. He's just there to defend. And they're, they're not letting him do his job. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of funny, though. Can I open it, Daddy? No. <laughs> the face. Okay. Huh? You'll need that em envelope someday. Someday soon. Won't open it until then. Well, why didn't you just hold on to it until then? Oh, uh, God. <laughs> because that would be the logical thing to do. Hmm. He's become more outwardly a smart ass than the troll. Uh, for real, though. An envelope about the Grammarese, huh? Hmm. Talk to me about the trial simulation. Alright, so what case are you going to use? Oh, the parrot is the, the least of our worries, really. <laughs> and the redacted, yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I think our mind just went to, like, the same place. Pirate, right? That's not... what he... cross-examined, but th that's... just a, a hint. I guess. But not even a hint, really. <laughs> Just a pirate. Alright, so what keys are you gonna use? You really wanna know, don't you? Of course I do! I mean, I'm going to be defending, aren't I? Oh, I, I, I just haven't played the uh, Professor Layton one. All the other ones I've played. And also Daigert and Saiban, I guess, but, but they haven't been released overseas yet, so... If all goes well, then yes. Of course, this is just a test. We want everyone to start with our preconceptions, a blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Wrong whose, but... Yeah, we are on the same wavelength on the redacted. <laughs> Well, mine. How many chair, remember? Oh. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose. I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good. That's better. You can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What? Then how am I supposed to defend? Let me worry about the details here. Remember, I am in charge of this trial. All of it. Who gave him permission? That's what I want to know. You were disbarred, sir. <laughs> From being an attorney. Fair enough, but like... They still just like, let him do his thing in, in the- in the- in the courtroom? Okay, sure. Makes sense, I guess. But you don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo. If I am in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility. For good or bad. Just do what you can. No worry. I know what I'm doing. Uh, Alright. I recommend going down to the, to the detention center. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the case there. You just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Oh, you can talk to your clients. If you can get her to talk. Well, time's a wasting. Hold on, 
I just want to know, like, where we should go. We should go to the detention center first to get cool. Sweet. That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes. Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. He is depressed to see leave him be. <laughs> you know, the minute we get angry, the client will show. It always works that way. Like shouting, a oh, waiter! And they're standing right behind you? Oh, guard! Is our client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Kan Naijo? Well, anyway, please have a seat. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Why don't you do something, Trucy? You're a magician, aren't you? That's right. Okay. I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. She fucking did. <laughs> hmm. Miss Magic Underwear might have been a better bet. Has magic panties, Apollo. Um, uh, hi. Well, I'm your defense. I really think it has to be fate, you know. And by fate, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? Tell me, what's your sign? I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, never mind. You just got carried away there. I seem destined to get difficult clients, it seems. Um, so... What's your name? Oh, right, I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo. Apollo Justice. And I'm Trucy Wright. I know. It is getting nowhere fast. Apollo is never okay. Actually, no, he's fine! <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe you can tell us what happened. I'm your defense attorney, after all. Um, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? Well, the other day, this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Trucy. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless. I think I understand despair a little better now. You did good, Apollo. Look, she's doing her nails. What? Are nails more important than defense? Is that it? Let's go, Trucy. Excuse me. Could you... Could you read this? Um... Sure. I feel like a teenager on her first date. And this is the love letter we passed from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It's a business card, with a name and an address. The name is... Vera Misham? The address is for Drew's studio. And you're giving me this card because... Okay, thank you, bye! Well, looks like we're finished here. I wonder if Drew's studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. Um, wait, uh... What's in the back? Oh, wait. No. Just very mission. It's a pretty business card. Looks like a postcard, almost. And on the back... Hmm. Just her name. That seems odd to me. Huh? What does? Why write your name on the front and back of the card? Why not use the space in the back for a self-portrait? Or a caricature? 
And people would remember what you look like, too. That's not a bad idea, actually. Here, give me one of your cards, Apollo. She's drawing something. Hey, my hair's not that spiky. Okay, sweet. Interesting, we can't open this. Magic show tickets. She's 19. Apparently I know... My client apparently. I know nothing other than her name and mailing address. Nice. Okay, let's go to Drew Studio. Wow. This looks like... It looks like a studio. Gee. It, it, it sounded like it was gonna be a studio too, considering it's called Drew Studio, but... Who knows? Like life imitating art, or maybe it's the other way around. Mm hmm. But the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. Hey, don't touch those. It's okay, I'm just looking. Huh. Apollo, look at this one. Looks half finished. You can still see the rough sketch underneath. That's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Yeah, good point. That is odd. All the paintings have a really different style too. Ah, I thought I might find you two here. Ah. Emma! Long time no see! Oh? Seems like I run into you far too often. It's been three months. <laughs> but I know why you're here too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow? I've heard about it, sure. So Mr. Wright chose you, huh? You don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns the studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Misham. His daughter was put under arrest. Yeah, we just saw her at the detention center. It was funny though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit murder. I don't say. Not even by poisoning? That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning is a common way to get the job done when the murderer is a woman. Poisoning? Listen. Don't fucking... Come talk to me about poisoning. I'm having Dahlia flashbacks and uh, I don't care for them. At least she's dead now. <laughs> she was hanged. Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here with my snackus. I can't talk to anyone related to the, to the case this time around. Which means we'd better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Oh, I'm pretty sure she's given up now. She has no... She has no way to do this anymore. Or else... So, this, um, Drew Mission was some kind of artist? Apparently, did a lot of illustrations for books, I hear. Had a lot of female fans too, for what it's worth. Oh, well, I guess his stuff is kind of pretty. Like that old oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh? So it was a standalone painting or something? Is that what she means? It was an odd bird mission. I hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. Do you mean to anyone? It was always locked up here in the studio, apparently. Sorry, I just had the realization that I haven't been outside in weeks. <laughs> His only connection to the outside world was through letters he'd put in that letter box there. Letters? Do people still write letters? What do you mean, Apollo? <clears throat> I mean, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? 
Most people use email and stuff these days. Uh, Mr. Misham couldn't stand technology, it seems. <laughs> he did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that way was more artistic, you know? Or maybe he was just a boomer, you know? Either way. Uh. In any case, the only person besides him allowed in here was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. We took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Misham's and Vera's, basically. Basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Misham gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. His first interview ever. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? So this woman, Vera, she's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? Yep, a real sickly girl ever since she was little. Hardly ever went outside. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. That does sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. Why can't I ever get a normal client? Apollo. Please. Why would a shut-in daughter kill her own dead? Look at me. So about the poison, it was found to be in his coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not precisely? What does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. Anyway, it's not of the crime. Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside make for good articles. But then, why isn't the reporter, like, the, the main suspect? And it just so happened that he died the night of his first interview. At around 9pm every night, Vera always made him a cup of coffee. Last night, he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill. And died? She poisoned him on the night of, the, of his interview! Wouldn't the reporter see? It was near Mr. Misham when she brought her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. Supposedly, that's why she didn't notice he was there. It was the reporter who called the police, in fact. Wait, but why is she the suspect? If anyone's suspicious, it's the reporter! Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. Yeah, that is very suspicious. Okay, don't look around. There's a painting hidden back here. Hey, you're right. What if it's embarrassing somehow and he didn't want anyone to see it? You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. Huh. It's so... normal. It's hardly something to get mad about. Oh, that's, um... That's Momotaro, isn't it? It looks like it anyways. Huh? What is it, Apollo? Well, doesn't this painting look like... Never mind. Yes, the Peach Boy story, Momotaro. I better get a professional opinion on this. I wouldn't mind taking a closer look at those paintings. 
I just love oils, you know? How they're so thick. Is that the word? These paints are all dry. I'm just surprised at how different these all are. Yeah. And what's going on with this half-finished one? It must have been a work in progress. You can still see the rough sketch below. That's what's so weird. The sketch part doesn't really fit the finished parts. I noticed. It is weird. Okay. Ah, that's the victim's coffee mug. Ah, so the poison was in there. This is my first time seeing a real poison mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poison coffee? Not exactly, actually. What do you mean? No traces of poison were found in the coffee. What? You'll have to figure out the rest yourself. I'm officially not on your side, after all. That's cool. So, Emma, about this coffee mug. I hope you aren't trying to grill me for information. You know I'm not talking. I suppose you are the detective here. Why don't you two take a look yourselves? If you find a clue, I might not be unwilling to lend a hand. I think she's going to help us, Apollo. Let's check out this mug, shall we? Hey! Look there! That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. Something tells me that even Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. Well, this stain is probably... Hmm, better ask Emma. I suppose this says Misham or something? I don't really know. Yeah. The scroll on the side is Drew Misham's signature. I thought Emma could help us out here. Don't forget, Flattery will get you everywhere with her, Apollo. Huh? What are you two whispering about? Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it we always do when we run into you at a crime scene? What is it we always do, scientifically? Ah, you know me too well. Okay. Okay. Meaning we can get, um, scientific now? Well, I suppose. Just this once. Bring me anything you find suspicious and we'll check it out. Sweet. Um, Emma, how about this mug? There is a pale blue, uh, residue on the rim. Huh? Uh, that... Yes, well, it, it's just a rumor, but I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually Blue Emma. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's leftover from the testing spray. Forensic science! I know your hobby was behind this somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. So, what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? This spray. That's what. It turns blue when it touches poison. So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug. That's right. See? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim of the mug himself. itself. Wow! Science is amazing! It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma would be willing to help us out with a bit, out a bit more. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. They say flattery will get you everywhere. It's certainly worth talking to her a bit more. Uh, about the poison analysis. I was afraid you were going to ask about that. See, the solution is used to test for atroquinine. Atro... Huh? Atroquinine. The deadly poison found in the, found in the autopsy. Uh-oh. I know that spark in her eyes. She's getting excited. Best tread lightly. It's one of the most virulent poisons, but it's, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to show. Wait, but didn't 
didn't you say that he like took a sip and then immediately got bad? Oh, and guess what? Recent research has shown. Th th that's fine, really. We, we don't need to know all the gory details. I think I get it. You're to spray this stuff on something you want to test, right? Precisely. You can even find the slightest trace of poison with this. I want to try too, Emma. Pretty please? You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Yay, let's give it a whirl, Apollo. Ah, what are you doing? I was just seeing if I got a reaction off of you. How's this for a reaction? Never do that again. I'm not poisonous. Tell that to those hapless witnesses on the stand. Let's just get down to checking for real poison, shall we? Sweet. I don't know, hold on. <sighs> oh, okay, I see. Too bad. No reaction there. I'm sure Emma checked out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it, Apollo? Did you spray that little desk over there? I don't think so. The spray probably can't reach that far, you know? Let's check it out, just to be sure. Apollo Where where the inside of that cute little frame look oh, Would you look at that nice going Trucy. I know to work magic Never mind that I was the one who found it <laughs> Why would the inside of that frame have poison on it? it looks like we found the only other place that was poisoned in any case <laughs> hmm. Let's take a closer look at this desk here. I wonder why there's poison on this tiny frame. Very strange indeed. Wait, I know! I bet it was poison from the from the time he bought it. Haven't you heard about some kinds of green paint being toxic? I don't think they sell that kind anymore. And the poison was atroquinine anyway. A tiny, mysterious poison frame. Interesting. I examine the open drawer. That's what I have to do. This envelope's been opened and resealed. Oh, I know how to do that. You take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the steam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Why would someone open a letter and seal it again? Hmm. And I'd better hang on to this. Emma, how about this? Oh, that. 
guess. Why, that's a bright red envelope. She sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? My lips are sealed. Your lips are sealed? That's a first. You mean, you know what's inside the envelope. Sure, I read it, after all. Ah, you mean you were the one who ripped this open. Ha, huh, please. I would have... St I would have steamed it open. But she did sneak a peek at it, apparently. Know that I have a powerful weapon on my side. Weapon? Yes, the use of tools. Highly specialized tools for information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. Should try flattering her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open big doors if we fucking get it. Never heard that one, but it's good advice. Let's try talking to her some more. How about that envelope you found? I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an x-ray analyzer. X-ray? Like the x-rays you get at the dentist? That's right, at least that's what I call it. Huh? It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. The X-ray Spectralization. Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? So, basically, it lets you see inside things like envelopes. That's right. You're sharp, Jersey. It is a bit more complicated than that, in practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. What are you doing? Oh, just seeing if I could see through your hair, but it's like lead. Point that thing at me anymore and it might all fall out. And I wouldn't need an x-ray machine to see through it. Let's just get down to business, shall we? Right, let's test it on a sample first. It just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. I don't remember this part at all. You set the sample in the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience, there's no need to get a lancy. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view? Got it set to display. Uh... The outside of the envelope now, see? Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn that dial there for me, would you? Okay. That's right. That's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Hey, I got something. See? That's how you can read the letters on the ticket inside. Can we use that to read the, the letter we got from Phoenix? Cool, huh? Except, you can't read them. Just turn the dial a little more. What you have to understand is that a sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you can see that paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Wow. Really? This x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength, wavelength of only 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down into thin layers so we can only show what's written on that layer. Not entirely following you, but what good is it if we can't read anything? That's why we go on to step two. Try rubbing the image a bit, if you would. The image? You mean rub the screen? There, that fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial again, just a little. Good, now you can rub this image to fix it too. Hey, I get it! We just keep doing this until we got the whole thing. Exactly, not bad. Neat, let's do it some more.
You loser! Okay, let's print this one out. Ouch, you lose. At least you know where you stand, eh? Anyways, now you see the true hidden power of my weapon. Neat, huh? Well, let's try it out on the real thing, shall we? Okay, yeah, sure, but... The, uh... It's kind of, uh... Glitchy right now. I don't like that a lot. Where did I go last time? Who the fuck knows? Here we go. Ah, fuck it. It's fine. Probably anyways. Peak gameplay. Rubbing text over glitchy audio. Okay, let's first print this one out. Someone deposited $100,000 into M Mr. Misham's account. His paintings must be really valuable. There's another page in there. Care to take a look? You bet I do. If you're going to read someone's mail, you might as well read it all. Here it goes with the second page then. Spinning this thing is harder than it looks to for some reason. I don't know why. But it is. Like you gotta keep the spin like concentrated inside of the circle if your mouse goes outside of it sorry your stylus i'm not playing this on, em on an emulator at all <laughs> but then it just won't spin anyways okay let's print this one out sign the papers and send in the Enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within some days. I need not remind you to to spend spend speak of this to no one. Okay. <laughs> you could plug your mouse into your 3DS, right? Yes, of course. So it was a letter about payment for one of his paintings. I owe the secrecy, though. And? And what? Why was this letter the only one in here? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it had some special significance to him. Well, Emma? Well, indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she's keeping mum about it. Oh, I wanted to do more. So, Emma, I was wondering. What's the story about this reporter that came here for a story the night of the crime? Huh, I'm afraid I can't tell you because he's going to be a witness tomorrow, I hear. I thought so. I'll never forget that face, but what was his name? Oh, right. Brushel. Brushel? 
He's after a scoop to sell to the papers. So we're so a reporter comes for an interview with a painter. What happened to Lotta and Nicole? That's what I'm gonna say. Like, did they just like drop off the face of the planet? A reporter comes for an interview with a painter. His first interview ever. And that night, he's killed. Seems strange to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he is on the beat today, too. <laughs> They're famous now. He said something about covering a magician. Magician? Well, if it's not Trucy, that leaves only one other person. It wasn't Valencramerie by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got some big show lined up, I hear. So he's not interviewing Valencramerie. Looks like I'll be heading out to the Coliseum again. Sooner than I thought. Here, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. <laughs> Woohoo! This is it, Apollo. The place where magic and dreams converge. Just a while ago, it was the place where murder and nightmares converged. Let's go say hi to Uncle Valens. What about the case? Ha 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 performer laughs like that. Young Miss Trucy. How often I hoped we'd meet again, only to tell myself it was, a, was an impossible dream. <laughs> Uncle Valent, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his stronger traits. Well, Miss Trucy, how does the day find you? If you come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles such as I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. The world will watch in wonderment as Magnifi's illusions are reborn. Here, on stage, by my hand. Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grammarie Miracle is back after a seven-year absence? Miss Trucy, I must apologize. This show and this honor should have been his. Daddy. My co-magician in training sat Grammarie. That terrible thing hadn't... It's okay. Your father was a great magician, Trucy. If you were alive, then I, Valent Grammarie, would have been proud to stand upon this stage as his assistant. Thanks, Uncle Valence. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. To think we get to see the great Magnifi's illusions again. She's really looking forward to this, isn't she? Dun, 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 dun. My mentor, the magnific M magnificent Magnifi Magaramari. <laughs> I struggle so much. Was a true deity among magicians. A creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that defied our very imaginations. I was so little when I first, when I last saw one, but I still remember his shows. He did wheelies in the sports car through through the air above the audience, and then sped off to outer space, faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory was a bit embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. As heir to the Grammarie troop's secrets, it falls to me to provide one. It is my God-given destiny. Um, yes, you, nameless face, who speaks for the nameless masses, how can I help you? If the world was waiting, why did you hold off? Why, if the world was waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? Hmm, it appears the lad is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as law, which governs our land. I have, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The performance of Magnifi's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years. But no more. Seven years. That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? How 
And why was that? A little matter called performing rights, Miss Trucy. Can you tell us about these performance rights? Mephi's magic relied on an incredibly innova inno innovative idea. A trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property, and such was protected by property laws. Intellectual property, maybe? And if he knew this and bequeathed it in his will. To one person. You mean him? Yes. Miss Trucy, it was your father. Sac Marie was the inheritor of the Grammarie miracle. Hattie. Yet as you well know, he is gone. He disappeared suddenly seven years ago. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person is classified missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased, correct? In all absoluteness, those rolled up sleeves conceal your competence well, young man. That certain period of time of which you speak is seven years. Huh? Yes, Miss Trucy, though it pains me to say it. This past spring, April to be precise, was the time your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty mentor Magnifi passed to me. This was, in fact, stipulated by the will in the will by Magnifi himself. That's a bit suspicious, isn't it? Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah, it's called death in absentia. He's declared missing. Permanently. Addy. Okay, I gotta... Um, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. Aha! Uh -huh. Why, that bears the Grammarie seal! Hmm. Uncle Valent? Is something wrong? Trucy, where? Did you get this? Huh? Um, Daddy gave it to me. Your... Your, your daddy? My my partner? No, 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 no. My other daddy. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Trucy already like, I have two daddies. <laughs> Why now? Why would your lord daddy? <laughs> What's happening? Lord daddy. That's kind of sketching the whole archaic thing a bit. A signature upon the back. Do you recognize it? It belongs to none other than Sack Grammarie. What? That is Agnes? Might I be so bold as to open it? I am sorry, but I can't let you do that. Mm-hmm. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I don't think I can get me. <laughs> What's in this envelope, I wonder? <laughs> oh my god. So, a journalist was here on a story. All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit its mysteries to a paper. Um, his name was Brushel. 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 I think he remembers him. He doesn't look too happy about it. Brushel. That cloying smell of mint when he smiles. Yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? A man by that name called on me just now. Just now? Valen's vision is always toward tomorrow. Valen's feet step always forward. That is all. That's all? Very confusing. I am to perform a big magic show, yes? I wanted someone to cover it. Yet he had ears only for that incident. That incident? In any case, I requested that the rapacious reporter remove himself. So a painter has died. What of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of Grammarie. Uncle Valent! 
Do you know where the reporter went? I recommend that he visit that place popular with penalized perpetrators. A detention center? It was a rude individual. Might I see that card? Uh, sure. You would tear apart my respectability. I will tear apart. I will tear apart him. Ooh, here it comes, Apollo. Uncle Valen's big magic trick. Is he going to fix the card? I'm not sure that qualifies as big magic. What happened to the big magic? <laughs> it is not. Is it not more miraculous for it to stay ripped? I must have really not liked that journalist. Now the time has come when I must return to make my press designation preparations. By your leave, Miss Trucy. Thanks, Uncle Valent. Three days from now, make ready for a miracle. What do you think that journalist was after? And why did Valent react like that to this envelope? I think it's time to pay the detention center another visit. Sure, let's fucking go, I guess. First, we gotta drop by right every anything agency. Nope, not to Drew Studio, dumbass. Sorry, uh, let me go back to the detention center. There we go. Hmm, I'm fine. I think I hear what you're saying. We're all doing it for the money. End quote. Ah, oh, that has to be Brussels. No, 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 not at all. Looks like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter. Hey there, how are you doing? Who might you be? Ah, sorry. We didn't know someone was already here. I'm Apollo Justice, attorney at law. Talk about a nervous monkey. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Do I really have to... You? You justice? You? You... Know me? Do I know you? Of course I know you! <laughs> Stares down witnesses on stand till they spill beans, end quote. This... This man is speaking in asterisks without asterisks. I don't like it. No, that was not an asterisk. What? Ah, uh, he does. You're not wrong. It's not true. What's your writing? You're a reporter by any chance? Whoa, you! You're Trucy! What the hell is... Mm, maybe? I don't think so. Eh? Am I famous? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Trucy Wright hates carrying a bag. Puts everything she owns in her panties. End quote. <laughs> That's so not true! So long to your breeches there. I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy. Interview? So guard, I think I know what's going on here. Guarding rooms is my life. What else could I possibly need? End quotes. No, how many times do I need to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You deal with him. Uh, did you come here to interview the guard? Ooh wee, what a pickle. Accused wouldn't talk. Had to interview someone or go plum crazy. End quote. Huh? I should have guessed. Where's my, where are my manners? Name's Brushel. Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. Journalist just closes eyes. Writes. End quote. I have no fucking clue what you're saying, but sure. What's that nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins? Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what thrilling is. Wild rump through crossroads of mayhem, madness, end quote. You can see that. He's writing something again. 
Maybe if he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. Do I have to talk to this guy? So, Mr. Brushel, you're a journalist? Oh my god, you're right, he has a toothbrush. Oh my god. There it is. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Uh, me. L look, let me state one thing for the record here. Y yes? I'm the interviewer, you understand? Yeah? I'm the one asking the questions here. In quotes. Okay. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Well, I think it probably does. Exactly! I knew you'd understand. Huh? <laughs> Poor Apollo. So, the night of the murder. You were at Drew's studio. Who, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record. Y yes I might I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy, always on the road. Journalists always buys one way tickets. Never looks back. End quote. I can understand that philosophy, but you want to know the thing about one-way tickets. Once you use them, they're gone. It's almost like they're used for... One way. Well, because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. True enough. But don't they give normal tickets away too? Exactly! See? It's the same thing. What is? <laughs> uh, Apollo, I feel you. So, you went to do a story on Drew Misham. And he'd never had a story done about him before. That's right! Look, let me state one thing for the record here. Wh what I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. Well, tip me off to Drew. Why do the interview in the first place? Well, yes. Look, it's like... Well, I got it. Say there's this burger joint with fa fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy is going to tell me where he got it? At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly! See, that's what I'm talking about! I don't fucking know what the fuck you're talking about! I think I may have actually understood that one. I didn't! Apollo, please explain it to me. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears, eyes. Especially glass walls with speakers. End quote. Huh? <laughs> I feel like I'm tripping out. <laughs> right, I guess we'll leave then. Oh, but since you're here, might as well tell you a... A tidbit of news I saw just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us. Just for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'd seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup. When an article in a tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil painting stolen from art dealer's gallery. End quote, I believe it was. An oil painting. That was every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole, stole an oil painting. A giant peach. Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers. End quotes. Give me back a lot of... Or Nicole, like either of them, really. And this dude is boring. <laughs> okay, bye beach. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. Wh what's with that scary face you're making? And what's with the I know something but I'm not telling face you got going, Emma? 
Oh my god, Apollo would lose his shit. This painting came from behind that dresser. Ah, yes. So? It was stolen, no? I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit, a bit about this? I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Misham was a forger. A forger? So, what exactly is a forger? Your father. <laughs> well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Fakes? Copies of an original. Exact copies, so precise. You can't... So precise, you can't tell them apart. Well, why not just photocopy them? A big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as a real article. It's a crime, of course. So, Drew Mission was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. To supplement his work in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like the pra like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. Not in the case of a forgery, not necessarily anyway. Yeah, it is kind of suspicious because like those paintings that he has like going on in the background there, they're all so different. They they're not consistent. I mean, I guess like you don't actually have to like be consistent, but like there is like some kind of consistency in your art. Like, you don't go from, like, um, minimalist to, like, realistic to stylized. Like, those just don't, they don't mash, you know? But not in the case of a forgery, not necessarily, anyway. You know what the finished product is going to look like, after all. Oh, yeah, I guess you would. That's why I brought this. Yeah, I'm sure it looks better by the original artist. <laughs> I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. I get it now. Not that I really needed to go to such lengths. Seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. True. That will be interesting, and maybe valuable for our case. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. Flattery will get you everywhere, they say. He's like, flirt with her! <laughs> Come on, talk science with her! Hmm, maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Um, I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting. And I was wondering if your tool there might do the trick. Oh, fine. Fine! Just this time, though. Let's check it out! Hmm...
Oh! Interesting. Yo! Okay, let's print this one out. What? The heck? Wow, he really blows. The finished painting isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine don't ex didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted to for the rough. What do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, there's traces of charcoal between paint and canvas. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely. Then do a completely new painting on top of that. So Mr. Mission was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of... odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. Think we could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detection stuff, don't you? Yes. Actually, very much. It's a lot of fun. Yes, let's do the pufferfish one. What do we got under here? It's been... I can see if I can find the upscaled version for you later. Okay, let's print this out. Hmm. That's strange, isn't it? Doesn't that look strange? This one too! What's wrong, Apollo? It looks so serious all of a sudden. Um, you think I could just look at the last of three of these? Hi, my me. Knock yourself out. Okay, let's print this one out. Wh wh what the heck is all this? I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. You sure your device isn't licking some kind of strange radiation? Trucy, look at these three sketches. Do you notice anything? white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poker room at the Borscht Bowl Club. The dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then... The events that transpired during the governor's concert. What could it mean? How could he have painted those things? And why? But I want to know. Wait, is Trumishim... Your father? Give me a break! Does that seem even remotely possible to you? 
I never even heard of Drew any Drew mission before. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But there were my cases. Drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? And what did he have to do with me? You have a stalker, Apollo! Part 2, let's go! Good morning! So, you're Vera, right? I'm Trizzy, Trizzy Wright. That's right, with a W. But not right, right? Um, we're on your side. You can tell us anything. Please. Good morning. She... She speaks! Hmm, not bad, not bad. But I think you do better with a little smile, you know? You're so pretty. You need to sell yourself. Ah! Okay. I know what you mean, but it really does not sound right, Percy. <laughs> and here we are. We sure are. Oh my god. Trucy, let's... Take it easy, for starters. Apollo catches on really quick. It's like, Truzy, please, no. It does. Thank you for taking my case. Okay. Well, that's a start, I guess. There she goes with the nail polish again. That's great, really. It's so cultured. Want to try? Oh, really? Ah, <sighs> girls. The victim, Drew Misham, was a forger. And a stolen painting was found in his studio. A life of crime, really. Maybe one that led to his death. Well, we will now, uh, <clears throat> begin the, uh, trial of v v Vera Misham. Is the judge okay? His voice is all raspy and he's looking around all nervous-like. Um, <clears throat> the repercussions of today's trial will most likely be felt for a long time, and may indeed alter our legal system forever. Today is a test of the jurist system. And the first step toward the new order in our courts. How do you secret mission? The jurists will function like a jury. It is hoped their inclusion will help the courts to better reflect the people's will. Why aren't there any jurists in the courtroom? Three closed-circuit cameras watch this courtroom at all times. The jurists have access to everything that transpires. Jurists, judge well and judge cool. Now see here, Prosecutor Gavin. I, I was going to say that. Ah, my apologies, Herr Judge. Ahem. <clears throat> Jurists, today, uh... Judge today's trial coolly, if you would be so kind. Jurists are unbound by the letters, the letter of, lo of the law. They don't affect the trial with evidence, but by their feelings. And we're about to find out just what effect they're going to have. Very well. Prosecutor Gavin, the details of the case, if you would. The victim is the painter Drew Misham. He was killed in his own studio. His coffee was poisoned. By whom, you ask? By none other than the defendant, Vera Misham. Objection! There wasn't any poison in the coffee. Achtung. Someone has been doing their homework. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee, but on the mug itself. The mug? Ma! Residue was found on the rim, I see. The autopsy report describes the manner of our victim's death. The court accepts this as evidence. 
According to this report, the victim's death was caused by atroconine poisoning. A chemical compound that compound that does not occur naturally. Lethal dosage is a mere 0.002 milligrams. A touch of atroconine in the body is a touch of the reaper's sight. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. You may present your witness. I have for you today a simple man for a simple case. A man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. Journalist, no doubt. The witness will state his name and occupation. Oh boy. Alright. Well, for starters, my name is Spark Brushel. My job is a lone observer of the world. In other words, a freelance journalist, right? Ahem. <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'd like to state something here for the record. Yes, Mr. Brushel. I dislike conclusions, specifically to jumping to aspects of conclusions. The jumping to aspects of conclusions. Preconceptions make parked sandbox of endless desert waste. Desert. Desert waste, yes. End quote. But we're a journalist. You said so yourself yesterday. Well, that's true, yes. But you must understand, I stand before you today a man with a dream. I'm offering you my testimony in exchange for exclusive rights to the story. Scoop turns Mr. Brushel into that Mr. Brushel. End quote. Let's hear your testimony then, shall we? A simple case, uh, Gla uh, Glavin Gavin? Glavin Gavin? For me, the jury is still out. Do I have to- Oh no. Oh no, this entire chapter is just- Ugh, talking to this guy. Fuck that. Visited the studio around 9 that night to do the interview. The first outsider to enter the atelier. Journalistic history made, end quotes. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. You know what happened next. Star falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Hmm. That does sound like a simple case. Unless... You were the one who poisoned him. What, what, what are you saying, Judge? Ahem. Need I remind you, the cameras are rolling today. I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. Ah, I see. You didn't do it, did you? M m m m me do a thing like that? C come on, that's like... Newsmaker making the news, end quote. Or even contemporary witch hunt, end quote. I know, wild accusations rock courtroom, end quote. <laughs> rock indeed. Prosecutor Gavin sure looks like he's having fun. I'm so happy for him. I can't tell if that was supposed to be sarcastic or not. Very well, Mr. Justice. Your cross-examination, please. You gotta go to... And you know, there we go. And then press. What's this about a star falling? Star falls, huh? It's like an old telegram. Send money, over. Zoe, you don't know. That's like a journalism code word. An important personage passes away, a star falls, get it? But there's no gravity in space, is there? I wouldn't think stars could fall, really. Does this matter? <laughs> oh boy, this is good stuff, good stuff. How about star breaks? Nah, Lex Punch. I know, I know, star dies. Nah, Max Imagination. Of course, you could go with Drew dies, straight to the point. I like it. I think we need to hear more about something a little more substantial. The star's coffee. You say Mr. Misham had the coffee too. But did you actually see him drink the coffee? Of course. He who sees it wins, but he who says it wins bigger. End quote. I live in a man sees dog eat dog and writes about it world, yet. Yet... I guess I can't say I saw him drink it, really. He had one so-called sip, if that. Man puts lips to mug. Drinks. End quote. Hmm. That poison is quite virulent, I hear. My stomach did a so-called somersault, since I'd gulped down this that coffee without so much as a second glance at it. Wait, maybe something's there. Some kind of so-called trick. Anyone want to venture a guess for, for the record? Does this guy have a pause button? 
Well, Mr. Justice, did you find that testimony valuable? Very important. The victim drank his coffee, then immediately fell over. Oh yes, yes, you can press with that you can go to press with that one. Your Honor, this is a vital piece of information. Please add it to the testimony. Very well. The witness will add this to his testimony. Vital, right. He had one sip if that. The next moment he was on the floor. Was he now? Objection! You know what I have a problem with? A particular property of the poison used. The troquinine. Mm-hmm. No. Prosecutor Gavin was quite clear about the poison. A lethal dosage of 0 0.002 milligrams paralyzes the central nervous system. If you drank that, even you, Mr. Justice, would be reduced to a quivering pile. Why are you using me as an example? Unfortunately, we weren't told everything. There was a vital omission in Prosecutor Gavin's information. An omission? Atroquinine is virulent, as he says. But death doesn't come upon ingestion, not immediately. That's because atroquinine is slow-acting. Slow-acting? What, 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 what? According to one forensic scientist. It's one of the most virulent poisons, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to, pro to show. Ha ha ha. If we suppose at the moment Mr. Misham sipped the coffee was when he sealed his fate, then he would still have had time to time left to enjoy his last cup of joe. Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? If what the defense is correct. Why, that contradicts the entire testimony we've just heard. Well, Mr. Brushel, anything to say? On the record? Slow acting. Slow act... It was virulent, alright. Even then, it had already begun digging its claws into the journalist. He's working on his scoop. Uh, it's Brushel, yeah? Herr Brushel, let's take a trip back down memory lane. Huh? Did the victim really die the instant he took a sip? Think it over. This is vital. You know what I think? I think that was... A not-so-subliminal suggestion. End quote. I admit, it does cause a problem if he died when you say he died. I would be forced to say Auf Wiedersehen to my simple case. And you would be forced to say farewell to your article. Come again? You can't write a story based on conjecture, can you? And as the case drags on, all the reporters will pick up the scent. And you'll be forced to kiss your exclusive scoop goodbye. Scoop? Scoop? Oh no, he's using it in his mouth too now. I don't like it. On his glasses too? Oh boy. No. <laughs> Look, wait, just wait! A second, just one second. We're waiting, we're waiting. Out with it! I think I just recalled the so-called important detail. Revival of recollection, end quote. A story survival, end quote. I'm turning utterly confused, end quote. Actually, I did notice something when I visited the, visited, visited the studio. I'd heard of poison that takes its sweet time, see? But not what I've been saying for the last few minutes, apparently. Mr. Brushel, are you saying you noticed something that explains that what happened? You bet I am. The antidote for a poisonous contradiction, end quote, you might say. Or, I still have no idea what you're talking about, end quote, I might say. I figured it out, but only after an in-depth interview. See, thanks to my journalism skills, I know who poisoned that coffee. Mug, but yeah, sure. Mortar, mortar, mortar! As far as I can tell, the witness is standing by his testimony. That Mr. Misham died the instant after he drank. Of course I'm standing by my testimony. And my dream of exclusive rights to this story. Ugh, I suppose it was too much to hope for. What was? Of course, he wouldn't choose a simple case. Not him. Him? Phoenix Wright. Who else? A 
Achtung, Herr Brushel. Report for us, if you would. What is it that you notice? In this court is a critical trial of the jurist system. I am afraid no room for doubt is permissible. You will testify to the court about what you noticed. Ah, my god. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Mission was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. I thought nothing of it at the time, of course. Now that I think about it, what if he was writing a suicide note? Hmm. A suicide note. Yes, he had this look on his face. And his face inscrutable as a quadratic equation, end quote. Suicide? Poor Mr. Misham. But that means Vera's innocent. Would someone commit suicide in the middle of an interview? Oh. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Sure. Give me Lada or give me nothing. <laughs> Honestly. No, I have to press this. So he put the letter away when he saw you. Early reporter gets warm. End quote. It's my secret. I'm not sure I follow. It's not of the interview. I arrive 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The handle turns, the door opens, and I barge in. Are you sure that's okay to do? I mean, isn't that unlawful entry, really? Mr. Misham sure seemed to think so. You should have seen him. He crammed his letter into that yellow envelope as fast as he could. I know a secret when I spot one. And that was one. It does seem significant. Well, Mr. Justice. I wonder. It does have the ring of something important, added testimony. The defense finds this testimony vital, Your Honor. Very well. Please add it to the testimony, then. Eh, why not? My account comes free of charge. It was a yellow envelope. Oh, really? Was it, was it yellow, you say? That's strange, because, uh... You only find the red one. As it just so happens, there was a single letter in the desk drawer at the scene. In a red envelope! I thought that was his tongue for a second. Prosecutor Gavin! Yes? It was a yellow envelope found at the scene of the crime. Unfortunately, no. But he had four heads. It's easy to mistake the color of an envelope. I don't think there is any way you could mistake red for yellow. <laughs> like, even if you're colorblind. I guess. But not this envelope. You see, it was postmarked already. Seven years ago. Well, Mr. Brushel, you can explain that. Drew. Right, he wanted to get that letter in an envelope. Pronto. Get it out of sight of my beady eyes, right? So he grabbed the nearest envelope and crammed away. And what about the red and yellow envelope contradiction, chump? Well, Mr. Justice, have you anything to say to the witness's claim? At night, the victim put a letter he had been writing in a red envelope. It's impossible. That's impossible. Ah, I like your expression. So full of confidence. It's simple, really. As it just so happens, the defense team investigated the contents of this envelope. With, um, the assistance of a forensic scientist. What? Note that this letter is addressed to Drew Misham. Oh! Why would he address a letter to himself? Let alone send a suicide note to himself. I've been scooped! Indeed. Order! 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 Mr. Brushel, can you explain this to the court? Oh my my my. How could I have forgotten? I suppose this happens to the best of us. Reporter gets old, forgets lots. Lots, end quote. How old are you? You're only 36, dude. You're not that old. 
I'm still waiting for an explanation, Mr. Brushel. Well, that's the thing, see? After he put the, his letter in that envelope. Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp, a so-called postage stamp, end quotes. A stamp? Whatever for? To mail his letter, what else? And then, why well, yes, I think I saw him put it in his letterbox. Yes, it was a yellow envelope, and he put it in that box. Well, apparently this yellow letter has nothing to do with the case. Oh, how I wish it did. Just think if that were a suicide note. What a story. Star writes suicide note in front of reporter. False. In quotes. Ahem. As I was saying, that has nothing to do with this case. That said, yes, your honor, it makes me wonder about the contents of that red envelope. $100,000 is quite a good deal of money. This was from seven years ago, yeah? So am I finished here? I mean, am I finished here? I was thinking of, you know, going home to start writing. No. Alas, we have like one, two, two more to go. And I'm not happy about it. Um, I hate to state what should be pretty obvious to anyone. But when you catch the scent of a story... You make that, a uh, rather unique face. Ah, c come on! An attorney has active imagination, little else. End quote. Even I noticed something, and my eyes aren't what they used to be. You know, I'm starting to understand what all this perceiving stuff is about. Judge has active imagination. End quote. Please, continue with your testimony. Tell us about the scent of a story. Hey, I'm the one asking the questions here, usually. <laughs> Actually, it took a bit of work to get a thumbs up on the interview. Mm -hmm. Reporter leverages story, gets his interview, end quote. The story concerned a certain case from seven years ago. That red envelope probably had something to do with it. Say what you will, but Drew's talent was without compare. So you threatened to go to press with this story. That's how you got your interview? Blackmail? Well, yes. I mean, no, 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 no. It wasn't exactly black. I mean, I'm not... Uh. Something wrong, Mr. Brushel? L look! This is my story, my tidbit. Journalist's info is livelihood, end quotes. I see. Well, you have me chatting away in here. What's going on out there? What if some Wally Wordsworth or Sally Scooper gets wind of my story? They could be going to press while I'm going to waste. And the court feels your pain, Mr. Bushel. Mr. Justice, let's pick up the pace. A certain case, seven years ago. Wait. Seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I need to go to like the fifth one. Say what you will. Interesting. Gotcha. Sweat march, Mr. Brushel? Uh, uh, yeah, well, a man can't help his glance, you know? It's more than that. When Mr. Misham's talent was mentioned, 
You suddenly began to sweat buckets. You're hiding something about his talent. What? Th 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 that's ridiculous. Evidence time. Let's show me where Mr. Mission's true talent lay. Which just so happens I have evidence showing the talent mentioned in that letter. This painting was found in Mr. Mishram's studio. There are two problems with this painting. The first is it wasn't painted by Mr. Mishram. The second is that there was another painting in the studio. Inside his pants. And thank God. <laughs> Which looked exactly like this one. Except it was only half done. Then we have a letter discussing a payment of $100,000, which suggests a certain business operation. The business of making forgeries. Uh. That is all, Your Honor. Everyone, please, everyone! Can we keep this private? Please? This is my story. My scoop. Forgery. That's a serious crime. Trumisham is known as an artist these days. There were rumors he dabbled in another kind of art until a few years back. Another art? Meaning... Forgery? Trumisham was talented, alright. Talented at making precise, detailed fakes. A fact that remains that, is, that certain criminal elements were quick to discover. Criminal elements. What? You can't seriously be talking about... Exactly. I'm talking about forging evidence. The rumors started circulating seven years ago. S seven years ago? So, are we to understand that this letter... This payment of $100,000 was for... Exactly. Forged evidence and its tidy profit. End quote. Order! 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 Why? It's like our victim was living a double life! Drew Mishima Santa Montana. Aha! This is my chance. So the victim had ties to the criminal world, right? He could have had plenty of enemies we know nothing about. Objection! This is my first time hearing of this criminal world. We certainly found no criminal connections when we conducted our investigation. But how do you explain all this money? You have to admit there is a possibility of some legal activity here. Objection! But there is no proof tying this letter to our case. Our case was and remained simple from the beginning. Only the defendant could have poisoned that mug that night. And you, of course. Hey, hey, hey! The only thing I poison is my pen. When I'm writing reviews. Mr. Breschel, your testimony to this point has been quite unreliable. It doesn't speak well of your reporting ac acumen. What are you talking about? My journalism is rock solid. Journalism so solid you could stand an elephant on it. End quote. In any case... Let's hear a summarized recap of your testimony there. It's almost like there's a reason why Phoenix chose this case in particular. If we can ascertain the situation in that studio from the recap, this trial is over. Apollo! What is he talking about? The cross-examination showed Mr. Brushel didn't have a reason or means to poison him. As long as there is no other, there are no other suspects, then the killer had to be Vera. That's what. This next testimony is our last chance. Mr. Brushel, your testimony, please. The other person in the studio that night was a defendant. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She admitted it as much herself. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug. And nothing left that studio after he died. Nothing. Clearly, the only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter. A nice testimony. Clear. Succinct. And without room for doubt. Aw, oh, shucks. You really think so? 
And I believe this clarifies the situation that night. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may begin your final cross-examination. Right. Still have I still have one trump card left to play. And I won't let this trial end until I use it. We gotta get to the fourth statement and nothing that left the studio. There you go. Not one thing, you're sure? Yep, sure as can be. Well, one exception. One exception? What? Journalist Spark... S Journalist Spark Brushel does interview, leaves studio, end quote. Ah, ah ha ha, come on. It's a joke, get it? Not funny, I know, but still. Did something leave the studio that night? Why does that sound familiar? Where have I heard something like that before? Now that we've proven our witness is a comedian of sorts, I'd like to turn our defense attorney, turn to our defense attorney before returning to the testimony. Do you have any idea what, if anything, might have left the studio that night? Just one thing. I think one thing might very well have left the studio that night, actually. A certain something that was van that has vanished from the crime scene. By which you mean... Something other than our witness. Of course. Don't tell me. Vera Misham. Believe me, any comic relief I may provide is entirely unintentional. Let's see what you've got for us, Mr. Justice. Well, this thing wasn't at the scene of the crime, so I can't show it to you. But I do have evidence that shows it could have been taken from the scene. This is the only link between that studio and the outside world. A letterbox. What did Mr. Brushel just tell us? When he entered the studio on the night of the murder. The victim had just finished writing a letter. Yeah, he said that. And yeah, it was true. Furthermore, you went on to tell us. That he put the letter in the yellow envelope and put it in the, in the letterbox. That very same letterbox was empty, in other words. That night, the yellow envelope disappeared. Ah, yes, intriguing. So an envelope has disappeared from the scene of the crime. Of course, this changes nothing. Huh? He has a point, Mr. Justice. What we're trying to figure out here is how the poison got into Mr. Misham. Is it really important that this envelope the witness says he saw disappeared? Well, if it did disappear, then something did leave the studio that night. That seems very important to me. Very well then, the witness will add this to the testimony. You got it. I still think this fails to change anything here, foreheads. I wouldn't be so sure. The letter disappeared from the crime scene that night. This is exactly the opening I've been looking for. The letter was put in the post from the studio, but I hardly think that matters. I gotta go to the only thing. You're sure about that? Well, you're really, really precise. I was busy gobbing mint candies the whole time. One of those candies might have been poisoned. Yet at the, t at the time of the autopsy, no fresh fragrance of mint filled the room. And no mint residue was found. It's a long shot anyway. Don't tell me you're still trying to prove this. You think the victim ate, drank, or otherwise ingested something other than coffee? Hmm. Well, Mr. Justice, you have some proof. The possibility is there. I can feel it, just maybe not prove it. Not yet. And possibility isn't going to cut it. Not now. Mr. Misham ingested that poison via a route other than coffee. Can I prove it? I can prove it. Proof is possible. Here goes nothing. You do understand what we need, yeah? Proof, have foreheads. Not possibilities. Of course, I'm Prosecutor Gavin. I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you that proof. 
What did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. I saw him writing a letter, I did. Which was picked up by the mailman, I assume. Of course. Which means... That envelope had a stamp on it. A stamp? Ah! As we all know, stamps come with dried glue on the back. In order to use the glue, you have to wet it. By licking the stamp. No one worth talking to actually licks stamps in this day and age. Even if you wanted to talk to him, you couldn't. He's dead after all. Okay, so he licked the stamp. But wait. How does that explain the atroquinine on the rim of the coffee mug? If he licked the back of a poison stamp, the poison would get on his tongue, yes? What would then happen if he put the coffee mug to his mouth? Hmm? Those traces on the mug weren't the killer's doing. It was the other way around. What? The coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Misham. Mr. Misham poisoned the coffee mug himself. Order! 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 But, but that doesn't... Does it? Recall, if you would. Atroquinine is a slow-acting poison, yes? The poison entered his body when he put the stamp on that envelope. And his time wasn't up until the very moment he touched his lip to that cup of joe. You have something to add, Mr. Brushel? Uh-oh, his nose is picking up another scent. As I believe I mentioned earlier. Well, that's the thing, see? After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. Yes, a stamp. A so-called postage stamp. End quote. You know, I don't seem to remember him ever finding one. Maybe he just ran out. Incidentally, we searched the desk drawer at the scene of the crime. There were no stamps. Not a single one. Hmm. That does pose a problem. How will you prove that the stamp was co coated with poison? Actually, I'm glad no other stamps were found. It makes proving the stamp he used was poison possible. <laughs> good show, good show. You can't even prove there was a stamp at the scene in the first place. Well, let's hear what the defense has to say anyway. Where's your evidence that proves the existence of this poison stamp? Well, that certainly is a cute little frame, and by little, I mean really little. It was on the victim's desk, Your Honor. Quite empty, as you can see for yourself. I noticed that too during my in inspection. So what? Ah, apparently you weren't as observant as you should have been. You see, when you saw this frame, it was missing something quite important. Missing something? Yes, a pale bluish stain on the inside of the frame. Troquinine residue. What? It wasn't like told about this. The frame is only two inches square. The face of the frame is even smaller. Maybe an inch wide at most. You weren't saying. Oh, but I am. Tell me, what fits in such a small frame? A commemorative stamp, perhaps? Order, order, order! The poison stamp was in this frame? Possible. The prosecutor Gavin? And would he put something like that on his desk? Don't tell me he had it there so he would he could commit suicide if the mood struck. You know, can I say something? I had a thought, see. What, Mr. Brushel? And please stop jittering or jittering around like that. The victim was a forger, right? There's a lot of money in that line of work. Forger forges friends, makes enemies, too. End quote. So the poison stamp might have been a murder weapon aimed at him. Is Clavier a lefty? <laughs> because he uh, holds the guitar not the wrong way, but he holds it like the opposite way. You're supposed to hold the neck, or like with regular guitars anyway, there are like lefty guitars. But 
normally, ha ha ha, you would hold the neck of the guitar with your left hand. And you would strum with your, strum or pick, I guess, with your right hand. But he does it the opposite. So I, I suppose he's a lefty. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, a nice little detail. Oh, rich. That's rich. Leave the ridiculous flights of fancy to the governor's song lyrics, please. Finally, something we agree on. The stamp was a murder weapon. Nonsense. Murder is a simple business. Who would go to such lengths? No one. Oh, I disagree. Come again? Recall, if you would, the victim's reclusive lifestyle. Drew Misham hid from the world. He avoided meetings. Or ambidextrous, that's also a thing. Really? Did he? Hold on. I guess the best way to find out is to... Sorry, I'm using my browser right now just to look for some things. Yeah, when he's on the stage, he holds it like the the the, the righty way, and when he does the air guitar, he does the opposite way. What? Either that is a mistake, or he is ambidextrous. Interesting. Drew Misham hid from the world. He avoided meetings. His only contact with the outside world was the mail. The mail. Now, if you wanted to kill someone you couldn't meet, but you knew red letters, a stamp would be the perfect weapon. Ridiculous. Where's your proof? I want proof. Show us evidence that this poison stamp was sent to him as a murder weapon. I might not have evidence per se. The things are finally starting to come together. What is it, Apollo? Your fists are trembling. I think I know what happened. I don't believe it, but I can see it. I think I know how Mr. Mission was killed. Well, fill us in, Mr. Justice. A certain piece of evidence points to the truth, Your Honor. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. What did this say again? Oh my god, I can't fucking read this. Mr. Drew Misham, I've deposited the $100,000 in the designated account. Please send a receipt receipt uh, once you've you you've confirmed the transfer and then sign the papers and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp. Indeed. I can show you how someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Misham to the stamp of death. Isn't this in the envelope? The one from seven years ago? Think about the text of the letter again. Why am I getting Danganronpa? <laughs> I don't even like those games. No. I want to say maybe I should play them after this, but I don't really see the point really I, I I just got like a, um a notification from r slash Danganronpa and I'm like why the fuck also it kind of makes me it pisses me off a bit when people are like, if you like Danganronpa and you want want to play a similar game, there's Ace Attorney, and I'm like, how are they similar in any fucking way? <laughs> the court thing? That's like a minor part of the game. I don't fucking know. <sighs> Think about the text of the letter again. There were two pages in the envelope. This is page one. 
And this is page two. I want to draw your attention to one phrase in particular. Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. Three days? But it's been seven years! Did that letter not arrive until now? Was it stuck in the mail for seven years? The enclosed stamp, Your Honor. In other words, if I have the straight, the stamp, poison on the stamp, lick lick, end quote. Listen, if, it's like, if you like Danganronpa, I would much, much, um, uh, rather, like, recommend the Zero Escape series. They're a bit more similar. It's been 84 years. Now, what if he had done exactly as the letter asked? He would sign the document, put it in the envelope, and put the stamp on it, right? Then he would put it in his, in his letterbox. 15 minutes wouldn't have elapsed between affixing the stamp and mailing the letter. But the clock started ticking, and when the time came, he drew his last breath. And the murder weapon would be taken away by from the scene. Quite conveniently, thanks to the postal system. Such a splendid imagination you have here, forehead. Objection, Mr. Henderman. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny. Oh my god, I have this like sore inside of my nostril. Let me confirm one thing with you, if I might. A blown up house. So this poison stamp was inside this envelope from seven years ago, right? Is that what you'd have us believe? Really? Wh well, it is a little bit of a stretch, but there's a possibility. It has a very small possibility. How small, I wonder. Um, a poison stamp in this envelope. A stamp that then became the murder weapon. How do, how do you intend to prove this seeming coincidence? Well, oh, it was seven years ago, and we don't even know who sent that letter. And your answer is silence, I see. Very well, I move to... Who is this? Is not nice to pick on the Fraulein, Klavier? Oh god. Oh no. Oh, that fucked me up. Oh, that fucked me up. Silverfish are annoying. I've uh, had uh, my sh share fair of them. Fair share of them. That's that's not share fair. Fair share of them in my apartment. Especially in my old apartment. God, it was just... So many silverfish. At least I can deal with them. If there's a fucking spider, I just run. I remember I once called my mom at like 3 a.m. I'm not joking. I called my mom 3 a.m. in panic, hysterics, because there was a tiny little fucking spider on the floor. And I, I called, uh, I was in like this monitor, like apartment place. So I called like the night guards. And they had like just been there and I was in hysterics and I was like, please come to me. I need you here right now. I need you to find this fucking tiny spider and take care of it. And then I got my mom to call them because they wouldn't come to me. It was just a lot for a tiny fucking spider. And I saw like a, a couple silverfish in the hallway here last year some point I don't remember exactly when but I was like god damn it again
You befriended a spider I could never. Then it disappeared. No! I hate that. I hate that. The amount of times I sit here and I feel like I see like something like black creeping up on the wall and I'm like... Turning in panic and then there is nothing there. And I'm just like... Losing my mind about it for like 10 minutes until I forget about it. <laughs> Nah, Emma. Well, like my Christoph Gavin impression? Did I sound like him? Don't quit your day job. I'm sure I have a crime scene to be looking after, Fraulein Detective. Someone had to come dig you, dig you all out of the mess you're making of this case. Mess? You know, none of this would happen if you just trusted in science a little more. You can find out if that stamp was in that envelope. Easy. Care to explain yourself, Fraulein Detective? Glare at me all you want, but science is on my side. It's all in the residue, right? That's right. The poison detection spray. Spray. Produce the red envelope at once. You can open it on the authority of the court. Oh, looky here. Well, would you look at that? No mistaking it. That's a troquinine residue. Spiders belong in hell. Thank you. At least we stand on, on the same there. Like, I don't know how. I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm just like a natural like spider repellent or something. But I have like... I saw spiders here when I moved in, and there probably are like on my balcony or whatever, but I don't go out there just because of spiders. But I haven't seen a spider inside yet. Knock on wood. God. A murder weapon from the past. Now, seven years later, it bears its fangs at last. Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a <laughs> Why didn't this murder take place seven years ago? Well, um... There's one possibility. Maybe Mr. Mishram figured it out. Figured what out? He realized that the person who sent that letter wanted him dead. So he sent his reply with a different stamp. And put the, his decisive evidence in a frame. You're still here. Can I make a statement here on the record? I, Spark Razor Truth Brushel, claim this scoop as mine. Drew Misham killed in cold blood by sender of seven year old letter. End quote. Hmm, no, maybe something more succinct. Star falls after seven year delay. End quote. Order! 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 I see no room for further argument here. Though I admit, this is all coming as quite a, quite a shock. To think that the murder weapon reached his mouth after, after seven years. Stamp his tickets, ticket straight to afterlife. End quote. Uh-oh, I think the witness is a bad influence on your on our judge. And I see no need for further debate on this matter. The sender of that letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. A Apollo! I think we just won. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Clavier. Do you have to? Is this the bright future of our legal system? Prosecutor? Gavin? A ticket to the afterlife from seven years ago. Tickets for governor's shows are invalid after two weeks. But, but it doesn't make sense any other way. It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There's a fatal contradiction in here Forehead's claim. Oh? Huh? A contradiction? Poison stamp was placed in this envelope seven years ago. Whereupon it was framed until now. If that's the case... And why would Drew Misham have done what he did? 
Emma explained that. He must have realized it was poisoned. Therein lies the rub. Seven years ago, the forger drew Misham, sensed the trap, and put the stamp in the frame. I do not debate this, but this begs the question. Why, seven years later, did he use the stamp on the night of the murder? Ah. Surely, you don't mean to suggest that Mr. Sh Misham simply forgot. He put the murder weapon in a frame on his desk for seven years. And forgot? I expect us to believe he sprang the trap on himself. Uh, oh, okay, we got it. La, 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 la. The judge is a poor is a bad influence on the judge. And while I admit this is all quite shocking myself, it does seem highly unlikely that he would fall afoul to of a trap that he had been sitting on his desk for seven years. A Apollo, I don't think we're winning anymore. I'm glad to see we're all back in the real world now. Welcome back to reality. We've been waiting for you. Objection! Okay, then how do you explain the poison stamp that was in this envelope? Poison stamp? Where exactly is this poison stamp again? Have you brought it to court for us? Uh... I see no proof that such a thing ever existed. Objection! What about the Atroquinine residue, huh? Oh, I agree. It does seem to be a Atroquinine residue. But he has four heads. It's certainly no stamp. Y yeah, but... Even if your precious poison stamp did exist, Drew Misham never would have used it. That is all. <laughs> I believe we've come to a conclusion. Again. Apollo! Were we wrong the whole time? I can't believe it! The poison traces match up. It can't be coincidence. I'd like to bring some closure to this issue sometime this year. Mr. Justice. Yes, Your Honor. Let's review the facts and see where we stand. Seven years ago, Drew Misham received a red envelope. There were traces of the poison atroquinine on the document inside that envelope. A similar trace was also found at the crime scene, on this tiny picture frame. The defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope. An envelope that left the scene of the crime with a poison stamp on it. Yes, but even if this envelope contained a poison stamp, and Drew Misham, knowing this, put, put it in the frame, he never would have used that stamp. I'm afraid you're right. Which means there is a fatal flaw in the defense's case. I haven't been on the wrong track this whole time. I'm sure of it. The traces of a draconine. The envelope. The frame. And Drew Misham's mysterious death. We're all connected somehow. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have a conclusion for us? The defense stands by its case, Your Honor. You've seen that the logical outcome of the evidence makes no sense. Which means that one of our clues must be a fake. Ah, a fake clue. Fascinating. And if we find this fake, your wild fantasies will prove quite reasonable, yeah? The fake clues that clue that's thrown us off the poison's trail is none other than... The, the victim was a fake clue? I'm afraid I don't understand. I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the victim himself. Congratulations, you've completely lost me. So the fake evidence is none other than the master of fake himself, the forger. He makes a good story, I'll give you that. The fake clue, fakes, forgeries. Ah! I know that face. That's the I just had an idea face. I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyway. What if our forger is the fake? Come again? Seven years ago, our forger sniffed a trap and stepped aside. Seven years passed. Now the forger stumbles into that very same trap and dies. Why? And that's what I want to know. Because the forger who was killed was a fake. Here we are again. The victim was a fake? One forger smelled the trap. One forger fell into the trap. That's two forgers and one of them was a fake. Congratulations, you've lost it. 
Mortar! 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 So you are telling us that Drew Misham, the victim, was a fake? Well, if he was the fake, who is the real forger? We better not be claiming there was some kind of switcheroo. I'm afraid you're going to have to back up your story. Mr. Justice, show us just who the real Drew Misham was. If Drew Misham wasn't the real forger, there was only one other person it could have been. Understood, Your Honor. Forger Drew Misham was himself a forgery. The real forger was... Who we think in the real forger is, boys? Speaking of a uh, cross stitch, I saw someone who embroidered something once. I think I sent it to a friend. And it was so funny. But what was it? I have no fucking clue. I don't even know where it went. Vera, indeed. Um, let me see here. Hmm, I don't remember where it went. Did I maybe have- do I have it in my photos? 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 I can't speak. Speaking is difficult. What are the screenshots? Huh. No, okay, what if we go to albums <laughs> and find the Twitter album? There it is. Did I save anything from here? No. Okay, I have no fucking clue where it went. Whatever. Anyways, it's Vera. There can only be one explanation, really. The real identity of the forger, known as Drew Misham, is none, none other than his only daughter, Vera Misham. Martyr! 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 Mr. Justice, this is going out on a limb, even for you. I kind of agree. I mean, Vera, a forger? Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. If you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. Forgery had been taking place in that studio for quite some time. The forger wasn't caught in that trap seven years ago. This can only mean that the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forger. Well, actually, that just makes a certain kind of sense. One more thing. Only two sets of fingerprints were found in the forger's studio. Drew Mishams and Vera Mishams. If we know that Drew Mission wasn't the forger, that leaves only one possibility by process of elimination. The forger was Vera Misham. Well. Bing. Fascinating. Vera Misham? You've been paying attention to the trial so far. Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the forger, Drew Misham? Was that an expression of emotion I saw on her face? She should sell herself. <laughs> She's staring holes into Prosecutor Gavin's face. I'm used to being stared at by Frauleins, believe me. Well, they usually talk to me, too. Tell us, 
Were you the one who forged those works of art? Yes. So. So the forger drew mission was... You? Yes, it was me. What? What? The court was in an uproar, and it wasn't coming down. We had to break for a ten minute recess. Sweet. Please, no more of him. Well, that's a short one. And then... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Save, save, save. Okay. So, where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, Drew Misham, who was killed, it wasn't Drew Misham the forger, basically. Huh? Well, then, who was he? Well, he was actually. doing her nails. So, you really made those forgeries. Yes. The father. I know. It was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day, father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent for making forgeries? Or should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Anything. Father was so proud, and I so happy. But in the end, I was making those. I could probably cosplay her if I had longer hair. <laughs> I have dungarees. I don't have the head thing though. Um, and I don't have that color. Turtleneck. Portraits. I've never had a good constitution nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Now, because of me, father is. Do you know about this red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So you were already a, um... You were already creating your works back then. I started when I was only 12 years old. So the one who figured out the stamp was poison. That was... Mr. Justice, it's time! To the courtroom, please. R right Out of time. Wait, Vera, just one more thing, please. Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right. See, we checked them out and we saw that so what was underneath we saw the rough sketches underneath the three finished paintings I see Mr. Justice yes father he knew of you of both of you you're, you're a late father he was watching gathering information all about the right and co law offices but lately, we're not doing just law. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse and play piano. Well, they're not really gags. Yet, when father heard you had resumed the legal business, how pleased he was. Who was Mr. Misham? How am I supposed to know? 
What if he was daddy's daddy? Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Wait, how old how old was Drew Misham? 52 minus 33. 19. It could be. <laughs> Things are already confusing enough with all these daddies running around. Some of these fucking lines are unreal. God. We know that the victim's daughter, Vera, was the forger. What does this mean for the case? Guess we're about to find out. Court is now back in session. Her seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Perhaps you could begin by telling us how it all worked. How did you set up this Drew Mission Forger, Forger, Forger persona? <laughs> Where did I get Forger from? There's that stare again. She's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's a handsome guy. What's hard? Okay, I'm just gonna ignore that. Very well. Miss, if you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? Perhaps you'd rather answer my question. Were you the one who painted that painting? The remarkably similar one. Huh. Yes. I painted it. Yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who made the forgeries. And she did not wish to, wish to reveal the truth of their operation. So the victim was a stand-in, a decoy. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. I've done a bad thing. I have. Haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. You have seen this before, yeah? Yes, it was in the desk drawer. Very well, you may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. I created things and father sold them. This envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Father handled the deal, all of it. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Hmm. And there certainly was much great interest in your testimony. Now that the witness realizes it. Very well. Please begin the cross-examination. Right. Okay. I need more information about this forger. Miss Drew Misham. I had to press everything except for three. So these things you were making, uh... You mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. He was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was 12. Your Honor, she had no idea what she was doing it was illegal. Easy there, little attorney. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Hmm. True. Please tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. Alright. Envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Ow. Wait. Other than a painting, you mean... You'd only done paintings up to that point. Yes. Father had a realization. 
He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance, for instance, a letter someone had written, or a fingerprint left upon a cup, or a signature on a document, a seal upon a letter. You could fake a fingerprint? How in the fuck do you fake a fingerprint? None of this makes her sound very innocent at all. And the $100,000 promised in this letter was a start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Mission. A new industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh-oh. Do the stamp. What do you mean you received it? Did I do something wrong? Y you didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back. A troquinine. A moment, Herr Forehead. You can't force an answer upon the witness. Now then, perhaps you would tell me, Fräulein Vera. Why did you receive this stamp? Is something wrong? It was... beautiful. Ah, you mean it was one of those commemorative stamps? Yes, I think it was... I think it was. So, you didn't know about the poison? I guess not. So the trap failed by chance, by mistake. Thanks to this commemorative stamp. Hmm, quite the close call. You mean you moved to where the current Drew Studio is? Yes, we saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. A single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. I I think Mr. Wisham wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. So that was a real essence of the artist Drew Misham. He did the work, and he supplied the face. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Apparently not. About this commemorative stamp. Could you tell us more about it? It was very pretty. And more than that. Yes? It was a picture of people I liked at the time. This is something new. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. If you would be so kind as to continue your testimony, Fraulein. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. magician she liked. Was it this bunch? Apollo! They're not a bunch! Hmm, I see. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? Good question. Well, pretty stamps are always better and you can't beat Troop Grammarie. -E. But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think? Prosecutor Gavin? Prosecutor Gavin? Graham. Graham. Graham Marie. What's with Gavin? Can I ask just one question of this witness? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work. 
that was other than a painting. Please, tell me, what exactly did you make? Can I ask why? No, answer the question, now! The prosecutor, Gavin! You're usually not the one whose volume concerns me. Yes, it is unbecoming of me, I apologize. But I must know, please. Miss Misham, tell me. It was a book. A single page in a book. A book. Please be more specific. It was a handwritten book. Like, like a diary. No, I don't. No. What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost. Smish him. This book. Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover? Yes or no? How... how did you know? Objection! Prosecutor Gavin! The defendant is answering all of your questions! Stop badgering her! He's told you nothing, has he? Your soiled, solid mentor. Nothing! Solid? Who? Phoenix Wright. Who else? Daddy? I never told you about the trial seven years ago. About how he came to lose his attorney's badge. It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his, that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back, it bore the mark of a silk hat. What? Phoenix Wright, tossed out of the profession by false evidence. I thought that was kind of suggested at least by now. And the forger who made that evidence. Is this girl standing right in front of me? Vera, you must tell us. The evidence you made was used in the trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham, you, to forge that evidence? For all of our sakes, who was it? We only met once. You... you met the client? Well, who was it? Who was... Who was... What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face again. Yes, what? Is there something about me? I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book. The diary. Who was it? He did, yeah. Or at least he was like, I may have, I may not have. V Vera! This was in the beginning of the episode. The... The... Well... Ah, suddenly I understand why this part is really short. Defendant Vera, Vera Misham, conditioned and conscious. Examiner's diagnosis, acute atroquinine poisoning. Presents the recording of the trial of the, for the murder of Drew Misham. Vera Misham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. She is currently in intensive care, and is not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case, at, at first glance. Until it finally began to show its true colors. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. And that is where we must go. To find the whole truth. Oh boy, we're getting into it now. I'm like... <laughs> I 
And it's not that long, this part. Showdown time. I... I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Well? It seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Oh yes, over a game of cards. That was how we first met. Seven years ago. I'm getting chills. <laughs> Okay, it's been a long time since I felt like such a rookie. Gotta try and relax, but what do we got here? Crime photo. Interesting. Oh, Magnifique Grammarie, huh? Okay, interesting, interesting. Cause of death, loss of blood from bullet wound. Malignant tumor confirmed in victim's liver. Sweet. Oh boy. Shady Enigmar usually goes by his stage name Sac Grammarie. Haven't we seen him before? Shady Enigma. He went by a very similar name. Shady Smith. Anyways, this is Magnifi. Magnifi? Magnifi Grimory. The victim in this case died after being shot in the head while in the hospital. That means that at the beginning of the game, the person who died was none other than whom, exactly. I'm gonna try and relax. Ah! Good morning, Mr. Enigmar. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. <laughs> Maybe so. I understand. I'm asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards, and that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. Oh, morning, Daddy! Ah, oh, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? <laughs> I'm fine, as always. This old boy is here to help me after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. It's my first shows today after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is you talking about? Oh, oh boy. Huh? Me? Look what she started. Um, uh, here. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. He told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with spiky hair. And he said it was a really important. 
What's this? A memo for you or some such. Hmm, not from the looks of it. What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. She's so tiny. She is. Well, how do you feel about the trial today? We'll get through it, somehow. Seems fate's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than ten swift minutes remain to all those who have supported me in my life's work. I give thanks. Farewell. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win then, yes? They're calling him a true thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Of course, there's one of those every year. The switching of attorneys just before the trial. It was a different, difficult situation I put you in. But allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best. Do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a pep speech. I'll do what I can. <laughs> I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. I impossible? Yes. Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep. You bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday. And the information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still... I'll do what I can, for their sake. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I'm in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. My client is Shady Enigmar, known to the world as Sac Grammarie. A wildly popular magician, star of Troop Grammarie. His mentor, Magnifi Grammarie, was a rare breed of, of magician. He single-handedly ushered in the golden age of stage music. Until it was sh magic, until he was shot dead. I can't read. And Sacra Marie is a suspect. No. No fucking way. Yo. Okay, so... I was like, what if they lost their badge at the same time? Not quite. This is like uh, 10 days or so after the end of the second investigations game. Interesting, interesting. Court is now in session for the trial of Shady Enigmar. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking, is this all what is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a bus kill, really. Bus kill? Is this some new kind of crime? One of the worst. This is a trial, yeah? Where are the sweaty palms, the pounding hearts? A governor's concert got concerts got ten times the thrill this gig's got. Oh my god, he just debuted! Oh my god, this is I knew I did right in playing all the games in order of, like, the time in the game. Ah! Who oh, are you again? Clavier. Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started. Legally, yeah? Gavin? Defense attorney, Christoph Gavins. Ah, figures my bro is more famous in this part of town. Dear Gavin, lead singer for the mega hit band, the Gaviners. You're out of your league, rock boy. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. True, my debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. Overnight?! That's just a hobby to me compared to this, yeah? You have something under my sock. Sorry. <laughs> Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Euro rock accent, by the way. So he does. God, I don't even know how to. <laughs> I 
I'm just getting warmed up. Yeah, attorney, right. Perhaps you could would be so kind as to fill us into this case. Achtung, baby. Time to call on the opening act. Oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna do the one I... I, I prefer the, the, the last one, other than the one I started with. You're right. <laughs> they just took it from the old game. <laughs> what was his name again? Ah, yes. Detective Gumshoe. Hit it. And you are? You were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. Hey, you! Huh? Me? Today's the day, pal. Today I win, and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony. Today, see. <laughs> what? I normally lack confidence in your testimony? Hey, detective. This is my stage. Can the antics. Huh? Did it crash? No, did it crash? I mean, it's fine. I just started the chapter, but... Okay. All this hey-you-ing and such. It's fine. And I could care less about your history together. Ooh. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. The facts are as simple as they come. Here is the crime scene. The victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam, lights out. It's the facts. Hmm. Not so long ago, the victim, Magnifique Grammarie, was a- Grammarie? Why did you say Grammarie? Grammarie was a famous man. He had the entire country under his magic spell, as it were. Ah, yes. The great magician. He retired years ago, years ago though. Say the name Magnifi to one of my generation, and you'll be lucky to get a blank stare. Yes, no, I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Grabberie has made quite a name for themselves. Anyhow, the retired Magnifi's been in the hospital for the last year. Hmm, what was it? A um, malignorant tutor or something. Doing something to his liver, I think. Yeah. A malignant tumor, perhaps. In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. Hmm. The facts do seem simple enough. But something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock knock on the heaven's door? Why shoot him? Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, knock knock knock. I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the vi victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up. <laughs> With insulin. Ah, okay. When he was shot with a pistol. Yeah, I know, we're not used to seeing Phoenix in this part. This is like... We've only played him in HD until now. You know, we haven't seen what his sprite looks like in the old games. That's what it looked like in the old games. It looked even worse, I guess, in the uh, Game Boy Advance version. As in... I don't know if knock knock knocking on Heaven's Door or whatever is... Is a cover or what, but I know that uh, Guns N' Roses also have that song. In any 
in any way. <laughs> was shot with a pistol and a syringe was found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Hmm. And I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? What reason would he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting. Yeah, 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 but there was also knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. That was also one of the the references he used. Mm, Patient scene must live. Wait, how old is Clavier here? 17! <laughs> Gumshoe is only 32? I mean, I, I believe we looked at that before and I was just a shock dead, but like, for some reason I'm still surprised he's 32. <laughs> Trucy is eight. Oh my god, tiny baby. Y yes, sir. Pulling them straight out of school. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do, do him in. Okay, oh yeah, that's it. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a, a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him, and shot the old man in the forehead. Small prosecutor's form. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene. scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. What? You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here the letter in question. To my beloved student, Zack. To you, I entrust the task of lowering my life's something. Thank you, I can read it now. Very unusual, indeed. This is an Ace Attorney game, is it really? I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.05pm. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse. We both know the reason why. Although, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull the trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah, you cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Detective Gumshoe, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05? Without some specific reason. I don't know. The devil is in the details, Hiratone. Well, was there some reason? As it turns out, there was. Every night for a half hour, starting at 11. The victim, Magnifi Grammarai. Grammarai! Was given an IV. An IV? There it is, in the picture, off to the side of the bed. At, at 11, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night, without fail. So that was the only time they would meet without the chance of an un untimely interruption. During his IV. Very well. Shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. Uh, third statement, the defendant. There we go. Press. <laughs> How can you be so sure? 
Hey, you've got to learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself. Get that noggin cranking. When do you think of Scottish? Isn't- but, like, isn't this what, uh, what Edgeworth said to him in, like, the first Investigations game? Oh, boy. He was like, use your own brain instead of mine. Something like that. That was great. That was a great line. Yeah, what do the, the Scots have to do with Levin? When you failed to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says shoot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. But don't send the link though. But can't you just like explain it? Oh the The elevator video? Ah, uh, okay. Oh yeah 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 you sent it to me. Eleven <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I remember you showed it to me before. And I sent you that Norwegian one. There is like this uh, Scottish like comedy duo or something who made like a skit of them like going into like a a, a, a voice controlled elevator and they're going to the 11th floor and it just doesn't want to recognize their uh, their voices when they say 11. So they I tried to say it in like Various different ways, and it just does not want to pick up their voices at all. Anyways, <clears throat> you failed to grasp the con concept of shooting people is bad, detective. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows that it had been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright, as far as I can, as far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. A photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, clearly, Mr. Enigmore. Shot something else. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal. That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. Oh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Objection! What? And you can prove that with this photo. I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did the defendant shoot? The clown's forehead. The clown doll? Take a closer look. See? It's been shot in the forehead too. And there's a hole in the forehead. Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim. Objection. Huh. And I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll. He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead. Huh. Let's read the orders once more, shall we? He will shoot one shot, square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead. It definitely looks like it was shot. Bailiff, 
Send someone to investigate this matter. I admit, I'm impressed. But I expected nothing less. You can tell that the entire courtroom is just like way lower like quality than the actual courtroom used in like the rest of the game. Because I believe it's just like ripped straight from like the the first games. Or something. I would know because I stare intently at the point where where Clavier smashes his hand. <laughs> When he knocks it into the wall. Also, like, everything just look looks stranger. More pixelated in a way. Like the shadows and everything. Anyways, that's beside the point. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Perhaps he did have to shoot the forehead, as ordered. But the letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Clavier's just living in HD? Hmm. The bullet hole in the clown's doll's <clears throat> in the clown doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue, yet Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Clavier has enough money to just straight up look nicer. <laughs> He hasn't even started. This is his first prosecutor job, isn't it? I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it is to see the mighty fall. How sad it is to see the novice of her confidence. Novice is of her confidence, does it? He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. That's what she said, I guess. Oh yeah, that's right! You're not wrong, you're not wrong. They did, they did. That's right, overnight even. <laughs> oh my god. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. So what if he shot the clone? He still shot the victim, pal. Let me get this straight. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim. Hey, not a bad summary, pal. More of a confirmation than a summary, but whatever. It was really more of a confirmation than a summary. But our defense attorney seems pleased enough with himself. Do these people ever miss a chance to mock me? Well, now that Mr. Wright's gotten out of gotten that out, out of his system. Shall we continue with the testimony? I didn't have time to gather all the details before coming in here. This testimony might be my only source of, source, source of information. Better pay attention and read this letter carefully. Um. Uh... Okay, the bullets fire from pistol. I do think. You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That's the one. It's a funny looking gun, so there's no mistaking it. If you compare the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun, the rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. You bet we did. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, Sam. Why are you so certain? No well, pile of sand is your head been stuck in all this time, pal. You never heard of Zack and Valen's quick draw sh shoot him? Huh? What's that? One of the defendant's specialties. Zack and Valen stand on either side of a girl. Then they shoot. But the bullets don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of the pistols they used in, th in their show. Got a great design, huh? The kids love it. Many boys and girls join the police because of that pistol I hear. You know, I would explain a lot about the police force. Troop Grammarie stopped doing that act a while ago. 
The only man held on to that pistol. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. Well, this is this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pistol for magic show, see? But it can fire real bullets. Hmm. It looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. Ro hmm. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces of hi having been fired recently. So were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We m might say the lack of that a lack of fingerprints is, in effect, a fingerprint of its own. Aha! Intriguing point. Well made. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not well made. Not intriguing. In any case, the court accepts this evidence. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to our testimony. Okay. Uh... So what if we shot the clown? This one, okay, yeah. And then I have to... Objection! The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Yeah, but like I just said, pal, after he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Objection! Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon? How? It's quite simple, Your Honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Huh. If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim too. That's not even- that's not a contradiction. Not even close. All he had to do was reload the pistol after the, after the first shot. Oh, well, where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it. <laughs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party is just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet beyond my good looks and startling record sales. An utter lack of humility. Hmm. Ah. What's this? It seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said here, detective, it was just a warm-up act. <clears throat> now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who, you will find, can prove one thing for us. That it was Sacra Marie who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15 minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zack. Court is adjourned. Sweet. It's not broken, it's just he's in time to come back. Okay, there we go. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say, I expected nothing less. You've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you discovered the truth for yourself. I was thinking of you, you know? I think we need less thinking and more talking. That night in the hospital, what really happened? Ah, and the way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself, the letter. The one shot in the forehead, one, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of. I could not deny my mentor's wishes, even if it me meant my own death. Why not? This is something I will not say, for now at least. 
What's this for now business? I've done many things in my life, some well, some poorly. But this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? You wanted to know about the night of the incident. Finally, this guy sure likes to take his time getting to the important stuff. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. And found there upon his bedside table two pistols. Two? Yes, the one I had used on stage. And the one that had been used by my partner, Valent. Oh, for the sack in Valen's quick draw thing. My mentor had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. And I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my resolve faltered then for a moment. You faltered? You mean you thought about shooting him? Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, but not his first. So there were other requests you couldn't refuse before. To be honest, I've not always been steadfast, and I fear I've brought pain upon Trucy. Was Magnifique coercing his disciples somehow? Just what was going on in Troop Grammarie? Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. Instead, I turned and shot the clown. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. In your pocket? I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you will find it to be different than the one in my mentor. The... what were those called? Rifling marks. Yes. Well, that is all I have to tell you concerning the case. Concerning the case? You mean, there's something else you can tell me? Heh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thanks? Yes, there is something. My mentor. His eyes opened. What? Magnifique Grammarie? The old devil. He was not asleep, you see. Of course, the gunshot would have woken him anyway. And there we had our last discussion, us mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion. Maybe five, ten minutes or so. What did you talk about? <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright. Did I not just tell you? It does not concern this case. Sacra Marie. He seems pretty steadfast to me. Or maybe just stubborn. Mr. Wright, your presence is requested in the courtroom. Once again, I am in your hands. Right, let's get back in there. Court is now back in session. During our recess, a bullet was found found in and dug out from the clown's head. Well, this is news, and the rifling marks? It wasn't time to do a detailed analysis. Though they did find the weapon type matches the murder weapon. Ah, uh, well that's not very conclusive, is it? Which is why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. No decisive witness? How many times have I heard those words? Well, they often turn out to be far less decisive than you think. Oh, don't worry on my account. I'm quite confident this witness will do the job. After all, he is intimately acquainted with the players in their little production. Being the other half of the tr of Troop Grammarie's famous duo, Zack and Valent. Valent Grammarie. So we get to meet the great Magnifis. Other disciple. Why do I struggle with this name so much? I don't understand. He looks younger. Perhaps we'll start by asking your name and occupation. Valent Grammarie, magician. Eh, and you are the decisive witness, are you? You can prove your fellow student your partner's guilt. Fate. And a grand illusion filled with traps and tricks. Wait! The shooting took place in that hospital after 11 o'clock that night. If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? And one more to deduce this logically. The conclusion is... Yes. Um, okay. I always get the characters, don't I? I have an interesting fact for you. You s see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. That looks very familiar. W wait. That's the same letter Zach Grammarie received. 
Yes, or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Order, order, order! And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps you should see for yourself. Value, trust me, let's ask. 1120, Inter interesting. Well, it's practically the same. And the court accepts this into evidence. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks. Yeah, but it's re and it's awful. What exactly was your troop grammar re up to? By which you mean? I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him. Both of them, no less. It's just my opinion, Herr Judge. But from these letters, I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and in so doing, shared much of our lives. When people are so close, there is strain. A warping of relations, you might say. Yet this has nothing to do with the case at hand. And which you mean you're not going to tell us? Which makes me wonder even more about this reason they couldn't refuse. Well, let's get on with the testimony for starters. The defendant, Sacra Marie, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. From where he walks, the red roses rise singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating, though I hardly need to remind you. The evidence could just as clearly point to you as a suspect. I believe it is Grammary because Apollo is confused at first and he says Grammary or something, but no, it's Grammary. The letter, the murder weapon, and now the two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. <laughs> As every magician knows, timing is everything. Yes. And now it's time to get this party fired up. Oh, this chapter's not that long. Either. At night, I visited the hospital room at the time Magnifi requested. The smell of gunpowder hung in the room and my mentor was take, ha, had taken his final bow. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions. Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Then I informed the doctor and the police. Ah, so you were the one who reported the crime. Does it... Oh, great, we have a 30... 30 minute estimated time of death. God dang it! Ah, so you were the one who reported the crime. Indeed, I would think this fact alone would clear my name of suspicion. I has not jumped to any conclusions. Yes, the cross examination generally comes before the conclusions in this court. But if your testimony proves to be true, then the defendant, Sacra Marie, is guilty. And if it wasn't Sacra Marie, then the killer was you, Valent. And no disappearing act will get you out of that. <laughs> Gotta go to the fourth one. You have to deal. I love Raspberry! Can you send some my way? <laughs> there were two bullet holes at the scene. One in the victim, one in the clown. You were saying the one who shot the clown was you. No doubt my partner, Sack, has said much the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. See, that doesn't make sense. Why would you show up, see the guy dead, and be like, I am gonna shoot this clown? <laughs> uh, 
Unless he thought that he was coming after him. Or something, I don't fucking know. It doesn't make sense anyways. I better dig around here a bit more and see what I can turn up. I'm gonna ask my mom to make me a raspberry cake for my birthday. I would love that. <laughs> Mr. Valent, let me ask so ask about something else concerning the crime scene, namely the number of pistols. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what precisely? Two pistols were used in the second Valent quick draw shoot him, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet. Only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zack tell me back in the lobby? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time, and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. Hmm, I see no problem with that statement. Only one pistol is visible in the photograph of the crime scene, after all. So you picked up that pistol and fired it? Indeed I did. I like a zam, I like a zing, I like a boom. Hmm. Is the number of pistols really so important? It's quite important, actually. The number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail, de de detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the clown. Beep, boop, bop, beep. You are lying. According to the defendant, Sacra Marie, when he entered the room, there were two pistols on that table. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. Unlike the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant has some brains in his head. Whatever, I'm not even gonna fucking try. Well, what about what Mr. Valent has told us? You see, there's something about his testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you, I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. That's your story, at least. But the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Valent. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. We compare the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. Mr. Valent, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead! Order! 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 Well, this is all rather sudden. Objection. How can you object to that, you bitch? <laughs> what have I done? A prosecutor Gavin? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. S sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of the type of gun that fired them. No, that's not what you said. That's not what you said. You said that for the bullet found in the clown, but you did not say that for the bullet found in the forehead of the actual dude. I don't want to say his name because I struggled with saying it for some fucking reason. I don't know why. But that's not what you told us before. Exactly, Phoenix ex Yes. You said you verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you now. Quite sincerely, I might add. Would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? You have one job. It was just this morning. I am still young. He's claiming he was baby! I couldn't... It's not my fault, I'm baby. And I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, we would not be having this pleasant discussion now. Hmm. 
Valencar Marie. Yes, Your Honor. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness, but you have proven to be more divisive than decisive. Objection! You'll see in time. The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Valent entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove, he writes, the real fight is about to begin. But then, why... If he was already shot, why take the time to be like, I right, let me shoot this clown, and then I can ask for help or tell people about what's been happening? Oh my god, that's a beautiful cat. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, Floor just sent me a picture of their cat. Bring it. Very well. The witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say, 11.20 p.m. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, and then called in the doctor. But why? Why would you do that? The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death. 11.10 p.m. Oh, that's so cute. And the one in the room at the time was my partner, not me. Hmm, those times are rather close, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. To use a ten-minute discrepancy as the basis of your alibi. It's easy to explain in this situation, Herr Judge. For example, take our debut hit single, 13 years hard time for, f hard time for love. Listen, I'm just like seeing him there with his fucking single. They're fucking just peddling it out, just like, take our debut hit single, this one right here, now on sale, only thirteen ninety nine. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Something like that. I'm just imagining that. Cue to the song, press the play button, and it will play for 2 minutes, 15 seconds. Do it a hundred times, the result is the same. The new single was only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long? What a ripoff. Magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus pocus requires admirable focus. <laughs> like a cartoon dealer. Oh my god. The, when he said that the, 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 that the single was like so short, I was like, eh, that's it? <laughs> because I'm used to having singles with like 6 songs now. And it's not only just like six songs, it's like six songs like twice a year. <laughs> Plus an album like once a year. From the same group. They're, they're busy, they're just like churning out new music like every fucking month. It's exhausting. And expensive. <laughs> because you can't just like get every song on a one single CD. No, you have to get three versions to get all the songs. Anyways, magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus pocus requires admirable focus. Yes, and then and then time of and then the time of death determined by the doctor there is an incontrovertible truth. Very well. The prosecution warns us that we're dealing with rather precise times, and we can expect the cross examination to require the same level of precision. I would hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad sweeping accusations. Also, something I don't really understand is that apparently two shots are fired and no one in the hospital noticed at all what the fuck <laughs> hand sanitizer dispensers unless we blur the focus this case so clearly demands point taken baseless remarks will result in, result in a penalty 
Carry on, Mr. Wright. Carry on. Right. Hmm. Okay, let me go to the... There we go. Let's cut clear. No, press. Just another day, nothing unusual. Exactly. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death, true. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Magic reveals and making this complex appear simple, but reality is the opposite. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person has done their arithmetic homework. The point here is the IV the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Recall what we heard earlier about the victim, Magnificramarie's schedule. Every night at 11, Magnifi took an IV drip for 30 minutes. I can see the IV bag right there, yes. Now look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the back to the end. <laughs> Was that in uh, Sweden or in the Netherlands? <laughs> we love alcoholics. Ah. That makes sense. <laughs> like, no shade, but like, ah, yes, that makes sense. I was about to, like, go off on on Swedes, but then I was like, wait. But was it the Swedes? <laughs> Apparently not. It's the Dutch. <laughs> Look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the back to the end. Ah! The needle's been removed! Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was shot. That would seem to be the case. When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. Ha! Huh. You could just measure the remaining IV liquid. Precisely. The IV liquid functions for our purposes as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. From the amount remaining in the bag, it was determined that... The IV had stopped ten minutes after administration began. What if someone filled it up, though? And that's really, like, convenient that the IV just fell out after being shot in the forehead. I've had an I I IV drip in my arm. And let me tell you, that bitch was stuck in there. Like, I could- if I- if I could- if I could bend my hand, surely getting shot in the head, which is not connected to your arm in any ways, It, it wouldn't just pop out like that. <laughs> oh my god. Well. So. Uh, TLDR. Um, the Netherlands and Sweden are the same country. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, you have to, like, rip that bitch out. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a problem with this game. And so it was when I, Valent, entered that room. Ten minutes had passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Hmm, did not seem important. Very important. Well, seeing how it is the biggest clue we have to the time of death, I'd say it's very important. Hmm, agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine the time. We hold the power of arithmetic. Very well. The witness will add this detail to his testimony. 
Sometimes the most magical thing of all is the truth. Listen, I don't mind IVs. Just fucking keep the fucking epidural away from me. That shit almost made me pass out. The pregnant sheep. Wish her good luck, that's cute. Sometimes the most magical thing of all is the truth. The water of life springs not eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When first I entered that room, the stench of gunpowder assailed me. Next, the mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then, his left arm did I spy. A rose drooping and wilted. Huh? <laughs> it's Thorn, the discarded IV needle. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Knocked from the vein by the force of the shot. Luckily for you. I don't think that would be possible. <laughs> if that IV had not been there. Why? You might be a suspect. Indubitably so. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Your lucky color? What's that mean? Indeed, even today, I wear it proudly upon my suspect self. For it always, without fail, brings me luck. Why, when Zack and Valent won their first Magician's Grand Prix? Yes, the very one held by the Association of International Magicians. The same one that Max went to, right? It was adorned with this attire then too, and our trophy, a bust. Oh, what a day that was. Uh, this is one trip down memory lane that no one needs. A lucky color, yes indeed. And that IV too. I say, I think it was huge, especially for me, Valent. Hmm, that does seem to be the case indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, any thoughts on this testimony? Alan sure looks happy with himself. Okay, how about this lucky color testimony? No, that's not what I meant to do! Fuck! That was a problem. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Whatever, whatever. Whatever. But the most magical thing of all is the truth. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Go back. Get this one. And just... There we go. Contradiction. There we go. It certainly sounds like your lucky colors brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Valent, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor, the witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. What? What does vascular axis mean? Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Baseless accusations will be duly penalized. I do hope this latest accusation is well-based. Don't worry. I've got all your bases right here. Very well, let's hear the defense's claim. Where is your evidence that contradicts that Mr. Valent has told us? The crime photo, right? Yeah. The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. In the photo of the crime scene. All this talk of color has me yearning for black and white. Clear-cut simplicity. Tell us, Herr Wright. Just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure. And I assure you, it's quite simple. And I can't promise anything in black and white. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What in this photo contradicts the witness's testimony? Uh... It's green. Valen Grammary, let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow, yes? Kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yes. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? 
Yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in, in fact. Take another look at the photo and the, of the crime scene. Oh, what's this? Confusion. Doubt. Tell us, what do your elderly eyes spy? Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Valent. Look at that IV bag! <laughs> what is this? What foul mag-ick? It will be hard to call the IV liquid yellow. And I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. Huh. La cause like a no! Look at all the animals, though! <laughs> he did it in the- <laughs> Oh, I love it when he hits his gavel in time with the music! Do 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 ding ding ding! <laughs> oh, that's great. This... This is some kind of mistake! Yes, Prosecutor Gavin. You're a witness's mistake. The greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Valent Garmarie, as you reminded us several times, your lucky color is yellow, but the IV is clearly not. Well... This contradiction can mean only one thing. And to think, you almost had me. I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Something you'd like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. <laughs> yes, a contradiction. One that I, I shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. What do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree, at a glance, the ivy liquid does appear a sort of greenish yellow. But I assure you, the liquid itself is quite yellow. Yellow liquid? How can you say that? As far as I can tell from this photo, it's green. Yes, but what color is the ivy bag itself? The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a... Uh, I want to say light blue? Precisely. Figured it out yet? Put a yellow liquid in a blue bag and... You'll get green. This, incidentally, is the liquid's true color. I see. Your explanation does have the ring of truth to it. As I thought, there's no substitute for experience, Prosecutor Gavin. What? You may tell a good tale, but you have just proven something rather grave for you. For you, that is. Grave? The liquid in the ivy is yellow, yes. But how did this witness know that? It's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it, didn't you? Huh. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. At the scene of the crime, the IV liquid appears to be green. So let me ask, how did the witness know the IV liquid was actually yellow? Oh, like a zoom, my god! Like a zoom, OMG! Order! 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 Mr. Wright, you will explain this at once! The witness clearly knew the color of the ivy liquid, so I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness, Valent Grammarie, has testified that the ivy liquid was yellow because... From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witness knew that the ivy liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before. But not inside that blue bag we see in the photo. He saw the liquid by itself, in a clear colorless bag. I suppose he would have had to, but I'm still not clear as to what all this means. Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at the hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, Your Honor. I'm afraid I find nothing. So what if he knew the ivy liquid's color? Leave the getting excited over absolutely nothing to your teeny bopper fans, yeah? What? The Ivy Liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30-minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. 
Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, there is a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. W wait I know! An hourglass uses sand, but an IV bag uses liquid. I'm right, right? As much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body. At which point, like magic, it disappears. However, what if the amount of IV liquid had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Let me get this straight, Herr Wright. You're saying the witness watered, watered down the victim's IV bag. Not with water, water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. Now wait, wait, I said wait. How might an amateur such as myself say to perform such a task? I am an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. I'm afraid there's quite a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? Hmm, uh, he has a point. Amateurs. I, at least, would have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into that bag. You don't need to be an expert to see the look on the witness's face. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. I'm tired of these fairy tales lacking evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? Earth? Valentgar Marie. I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in the life of crime. Can I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Magic relies on props, and props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the prop was a small syringe. The victim syringe! It's the perfect prop for the magically increasing IV trick. And easy enough for an amateur to use. What kind of evidence is that? The syringe was clean, not a trace of liquid in it. And don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin? What? The victim had the syringe to adm administer his insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside. Well, Valent Marie, as you pointed out yourself, the ivy liquid is the perfect clock. One that you could manipulate at will. Now look. Now look. And the bunnies are cute though. And I do believe, well, with this being his first. That the burden of this trial has been a bit too much to bear for Prosecutor Gavin. I'm afraid that, while there is a doubt as to the amount of ivy liquid in that bag, the time of death cannot be proven. And that brings our trial to a close for today. Well, maybe I can squeeze an extra day out of this. I can do a little much needed investigation work. I see there are no objections. <laughs> Truly, there is no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the truth so effectively. A word to the wise. Underestimate the young, and they'll sweep your feet out from under you. In a way you never, ever expected. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. What's he talking about? You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of the I IV liquid. But there is no proof. There's no proof he didn't do it either. Yes, quite true. Can't you just, like, check another one of those bags and see if there is any liquid missing from that? I mean... Wouldn't that be a possibility? <laughs> or am I thinking about this way too simply? Probably. Huh? He's admitting it. Nor was this witness quite as decisive as I'd hoped. This, I admit, after all, why linger in the past when the future holds so much? You, 
have something in mind, Prosecutor Gavin. Proof, Herr Judge. I have another way to prove my case. With evidence, no less. What's this? This is the victim, Magnifique Marie's diary. Diary? After going into the hospital, Magnifique began writing his mem memoirs, it seems. The story of his birth, his startling debut, and of meeting his disciples. It seems he intended for the last chapter to end, quite appropriately, with his death. Wait, that book doesn't say what the reason was, does it? The reason why his disciples couldn't refuse his last request? Sadly, it does not. What's important here is on the last page. Apparently, the victim wrote in his journal that night, even after the IV had begun at 11 p.m. Let's read it, shall we? Ah, this does appear to have been written just before his death. Tonight's IV is in. Maybe the last. I leave the rest to them. And the first trip comes soon. This journal may end here, or it may go on, but not long. It depends on his hand. All that I can't read. Hmm. This does appear to have been written just before his death. The court accepts this into evidence. Okay, sweet. Now I can read it. Read the very last, last part with particular care. I wanted to read it, can I not? Oh, wait. There we go. This is the last page. The diary ends here. Huh. What's this? It looks like a page was ripped out. Well now, isn't that interesting? Okay, but can't I read it? Oh my god, that's annoying. Oh, there. Fuck, this journal may end here, or it may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. Of course, by his. He refers to our defendant, Sacra Marie. That would make sense, yes. He was the first scheduled visitor, after all. But look at what he said before that. This journal may end here, or it may go on. It may go on. Magnifique Grammarie intended to write again. That is... If Sacra Marie didn't pull the trigger. I see the defense understands the meaning of this. The victim's diary does not go on. It ends. Because Magnifique's life was brought to an end by the defendant, Sacra Marie. Order! 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 Prosecutor Gavin! Are you certain that Magnifique Grammarie wrote this? There's no mistaking his handwriting. Well, this does seem to be significant. According to this, Magnifi did intend to continue his diary. Yet if his diary ended here, which plainly it did, then the one who pulled the trigger was the first visitor, Sack Grammary. Well, how do you like me now, Herr writes? Still too green for your tastes? Hmm? He's right about the diary being pretty clear. Still, I find it hard to believe that he'd overlook such an obvious problem with this, with his precious evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, the witness's testimony we heard was lacking. But put together with this evidence, it seems quite sufficient for a case. If the diary is accepted like this, the trial is over. Hmm, maybe it's time for me to show them something. No... I hope whoever is here have caught up to what's happening. Considering this is Phoenix Wright's final case before he got disbarred. <sighs> I have no choice. No choice. I'm left with no choice but to show my own evidence. What? You have some evidence that overturns this diary. 
Hmm. It's not too late to rethink this and avoid more embarrassments. Very well. Please show us your evidence, Mr. Wright. Incidentally, don't even think of showing us this diary. I've just shown the court. Now that we've come this far, I hope you have something a little more decisive. Show us evidence that proves the victim continued writing his diary. Alright, I'd be happy to. The decisive evidence providing proving that the diary didn't end with this page is... First, take a close look at this diary. Not that a page has clearly been ripped out. What's this? And I hadn't noticed that at all. That's why we're still here talking about this. As it just so happens, I have here what I believe to be the missing page. Look, I don't believe it! Looking at this page, it's hard to imagine that the first visitor that night shot Magnifi Grammarai. Grammarai! That's the defense's position. Wait, let me see that. What in Sam Hill? Why, this is the continuation of the victim's diary. The torn edge of the page. It's a perfect match with the torn remains of the last page in Magnifi's diary. Quite remarkable. Would you care to explain what all this means, Herr Tony? The diary continued after his first visitor came, which means that the victim was still alive after Zach Grammarie left, leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Valent Grammarie! No. No! The handwriting, too, matches that on the other pages. This is, without a doubt, the genuine article. This is not, you know... Mortar! 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 But, but wait, this is... It's impossible! That old man couldn't have written that! Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you, Herr Wright? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Herr yeah, Judge? Y yes Prosecutor Gavin? Might I request we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. P P Prosecutor Gavin! This evidence overturns the current witnesses. I ask only to put it on hold. Please. My new witness has a very, very important piece of testimony to give. Five minutes. No more. I promise, Your Honor. Well, if you put it that way, Mr. Wright, what's your take on this? Well, Your Honor, judging from his enthusiasm, we'll have to hear this new testimony sooner or later anyway. So it might as well be sooner. Then... Though this is highly, highly irregular. We will put the current cross-examination on hold. The witness may step down. Now, Prosecutor Gavin, please bring this surprise witness to the courtroom. I had a bad feeling just then. That ripped out page was too obvious. He must have known. I should have known it was a bad sign all around. Hmm. Holding trial with no audience is a first, even for me, Prosecutor Gavin. I beg the court's understanding. But I had to make a judiciary deal with a witness to secure his testimony. A judiciary deal. We've gone full circle, boys. <laughs> Details of his testimony may have some legal ramifications, shall we, sh shall we say. I thought it best to contain the information to this room. Hmm. Very well. 
And you are the witness, I gather. Ah. Yes. Yes, sir. He looks like Mario, but... Old. <laughs> State your name and occupation for the record. Um, my name is Drew Misham. I am a painter. A painter? And you are somehow related to this case? No, well, not per se. I have one simple question for this witness. Mr. Misham, Mario Paint. Do you know what this is? Oh. Yeah, I know it well. How's that possible? Have you seen this diary page somewhere before? Oh, yeah, I mean, I made it. You... What? You made it? Yes, you might call it one of my works. The regional prosecutor's office received a tip-off yesterday. A legal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Sacra Marie. Illegal evidence? I initiated an investigation and found this witness. A painter to the world at large, Drew Misham was another side, you might say. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. Forgeries, in other words. Forgeries? Well, so we are to understand that this page here is a fake, prepared by a certain defense attorney. Hold it! I didn't prepare this evidence. Ah, the attorney speaks. Something about this page, I presume. But what is he saying? It makes no sense. After all, it was you who presented this evidence to us. Phoenix Wright. Witness! Uh, Mr. Misham, was it? Who requested this forgery? Who was your client? That, I don't know. What? Most of my clients prefer to remain anonym anonym <laughs> anonymous, even to me. I make the items they want, and receive my payment. That's the extent of my con contact with them. But, but there's no proof this is a fake! It's a fake. Huh? To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say, without a doubt, this is mine. Mr. Wright, you have just presented illegal evidence to this court. My court. It was careless of me. That's all I can say. Oh, oh boy! Um, uh, here. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. It was all a trap. A fatal trap. Mr. Wright? Yes? Do you have an explanation for yourself? If I did... Would the court hear it? Probably not. Forging evidence is a serious crime. And presenting it in court, a serious mistake. Fatal mistake for an attorney. Fatal too, perhaps. For your client, I fear. Tell me, what kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. A guilty one. Your Honor, wait! I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime, but you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an, an, an individual. I am sorry, Mr. Wright. Your Honor? Another close call, I dare say. If the prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip, everything would have gone the way you wanted it to, yeah? I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. I see no need for further discussion on this matter. Special witness dismissed.
Mr. Attorney. Yes? Could I ask your name? Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright, I have seen and studied many people, but none like you. I'll remember you, Mr. Wright. No, I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way. This trial is over. You have the right to find a new attorney and make an appeal. However, this court must... Ah, oh, your honor. Y yes, Mr. Sack? There's one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom. You cannot declare me guilty. It is impossible. I'm afraid the defendant is quite mistaken. I most certainly have the authority to declare a verdict on you. Except, tell me, how do you plan on announcing your verdict when your defendant does not exist? Doesn't exist? What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. Mr. Enigmar! Defendant escaped! Find him! Quick! Bailiff! Close all exits from the building! On the double! He must not be allowed to escape! That day, in that courtroom, a miracle occurred. The defendant, Shady Enigmar, aka Sacra Marie, did not just escape from court. He literally, unbelievably, vanished. Right before the bailiff's eyes. No one ever saw him again, not since that day. It was the Grammarie miracle. <laughs> the verdict was declared. After all, the defendant didn't exist. That's how it happened. The trial of Magician Sacra Marie vanished, along with him, for all eternity. The mysteries that remained behind were all solved. However... Solved, however, but not until seven years later. That was a lot. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, is this a long one? It is. I think I'm gonna end it here. And I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. Worst case, in I finish it on Monday. Uh, I only have like two chapters left though. So, I think I should be good if I finish it tomorrow, but just, the, the next chapter is just so long, and I'm, like, not up to dealing with that right now. But, yeah. That is how Phoenix Wright got this part. Oh my god, that was... It's really hard when you know... Damn. When you know you have to, like, present... The forged piece of evidence. And you're like, no. Oh my god. And you can't get out of it. That's awful. I mean, Phoenix had no idea. But, yeah. What I do remember, though, from the the next chapter is that it it plays a bit differently uh, than like the 
game usually does. I also remember that when I played it on my DS, it crashed. Well, I played it on my 3DS, it crashed like several times at the same place, and I'm like, fuck. Turns out it's just my 3DS, I can't run DS games. Maybe, maybe older 3DS consoles can, but like the, the new 3DS, no, it just doesn't want to. Anyways. That was upsetting, to say the least. But yeah, I, I remember like parts of this episode but I don't remember like all of it like I didn't remember that he got like the the fourth piece of evidence from Trucy which is fitting because that's how he uh, gives it to or how Apollo also gets forged evidence in the first trial So yeah, that's a lot of fun. Oh god, my ear is literally killing itself right now. Oh my god, ow. <sighs> it was fun though. And uh, yeah, finishing Apollo Justice tomorrow. Start the 3DS game, Dual Destinies, on Monday, maybe? Don't know yet. Depends, I guess. Um, actually, before I go, I want to show you one thing that I, I worked on. I'm not like overly happy with it, but uh, it's good enough, I think. You missed the ending. <laughs> I just finished. Uh, that's okay though. Um, so here, I I, I made I made these. <laughs> I don't know, I just wanted to see if I could. Magic man disappeared. Mm -hmm. It was like, haha, you, 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 you can't, uh, you can't give me the guilty verdict if I don't exist. And then he went, bye beach, and disappeared. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with these panels anyways oh my god I'm gonna finish Apollo Justice tomorrow like I said like 15 times already mm. because the next chapter is so long so long hmm Or at least it looks really long. Maybe it's not. Who the fuck knows? I'm not gonna fucking jump into that now. Hold on. Let me just like look at like the amount of like different parts there are to them. To them? To it. Uh. Okay. So we have that. That, that, and that, and ooh, it just keeps going. <laughs> Investigation has really messed up our perspective of how long a case can be. 
for real though for real oh my god i don't even know what it will be like in the fucking 3ds games like i don't remember jack shit like <laughs> the four chapters oh my god don't even fucking remind me of those four chapters but actually those were like six chapters really because they were like two plus four and i spent like 11 hours on them and like the first one was only like four hours maybe so like that's still way too much huh Well, anyways, that's it for today. <laughs> I have to start thinking about what to play, like, once I finish Kings Attorney. And I can bet that streams are not going to be as long then. I can promise that much. Oh my god, yes, name him Apollo, and if it's a girl, name her Trucy. <laughs> Heck yes. Uh, I am so tired. Literally just got out of bed to stream. <laughs> I'm I'm glad everything worked out well. I saw that you said something might be wrong. But it, it sounds like things went by well. Liz, I hope they did. So yeah, please be here for tomorrow when we finish this fucking game. Might even try to start it a bit earlier. Just because it's it's, it's a Sunday night, you know. And uh, I know that certain people have to get up early in the morning. <laughs> Me not being one of them. So, yeah. Hope to see you then. And uh, other than that, I hope you have a good night or great day or whatever it is, wherever you are. And yeah.